So, so you didn't read uh, that post? I don't recall reading the part about the, the uh, weed. I know that. But what about the prostitute? I might have, I might have read that. So you didn't read that? Showtime, boys and girls. Randy McNally is the topic of the day. Holy shit, what a week. Almost an agreement, almost an agreement at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. Go to the website, almostagreement.com. Uh, Voter Guy 23 will be coming soon. Uh, you can check that out there, and I'll start working on the interviews with that whole best of people. Speaking of best of people, I got Matt Shears in the room. He'll probably get to tell us about the people that aren't really Democrats because they're running for city because it's a nonpartisan race. <clears throat> um, but we'll get there at some point because the truth is not that. So, anyway, almost an agreement, almost an agreement at gmail.com. Favorite podcast provider, uh, give us a like, share, friend, follow, tell your friends about us, do that whole thing. Sam's here as, as per usual. And uh, we've got lots of fun stuff to talk about, not just Randy McNally. Um, we're going to talk about books and banning books and editing books. And uh, I don't know, there's a couple other things we, we pre-chatted about. So um, we'll go where we're going. So um, intro is going to do the intro thing and we're going to do a show. Matt Shears, everybody. Hey, how welcome you been, friend? back. It's good to see you, friend. Yeah. Um, Sam, how you been, bud? I'm okay. All right, so first, I got to I gotta get the first thing out of the way here is that uh, we missed you guys last week. Um, as you guys know, I'm not a fan of KUB, and when they blame shit on God, it makes it even more upsetting for me. Um, but uh, <laughs> apparently, God came through and knocked my power out for the totality. Like, I went out at like 7 on Friday night and didn't come back till 2, 3 in the morning. Wow. Um and uh, so that was right in the middle of our standard taping time. I had this stuff stuff going on all weekend, so we couldn't catch that up that episode. So um, I apologize for missing a week last week on you guys. Um, but we're coming back with fire, thanks to... Uh, <laughs> fire and hearts. Yeah, fire. <laughs> 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 um, all right, so I wasn't going to... I was going to try to hold off on this for a little while, but I don't well, think Well, first we of all, let's... I want to say I'm back. It's been a while. Usually after the election, I kind of hibernate for a little bit, a couple months, but I'm back. Uh, and I want to say hi to our... Uh, my my biggest fan when i'm on the show todd fromeyer he always listens to the whole episode so. when you're on show okay yeah. <laughs> well hey todd how you been buddy um i'd like to we need to check in give me hit me up todd um, um, remember because he always makes the jokes about how long they are we could we could we can yeah. do two hours on hamlin county i'm sure there's years of hamlin county mess to to, to get into okay so um <laughs> That wonderful clip that I started you guys with is from uh, our wonderful Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally uh, on Channel 5 in Nashville, um, kind of getting grilled a little bit about this uh, interesting situation. And so for backstory on my end of it, I hadn't heard about it yet until Matt here sent me a link to the Tennessee Holler story on it. Tennessee Holler is very left, progressive agenda, media source, for Mm -hmm. lack of a better word. And so little tingle of me goes, oh, this is probably some bullshit. And then as I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay. I think what my the, my immediate reaction was it's too on the nose something like that. Yeah, fair, like this fair is point. like old school in the '80s when the first round like it was before you were alive I guess. But this you know the first round of the freaking out about the gay community thing that happened in the federal mm-hmm. government like the top like two or three people that were out there you know beating gays over the head at least legally speaking um, turned out to have a bunch of gay prostitutes in their past and stuff like that. So it's like this is too on the nose. This isn't possible. This is this has got to be a joke. And then, no, I mean, legitimately, McNally's office acknowledges that that was him, and he did those things. Yeah, they things. didn't even try and spin it. They were. I mean, they didn't say. I mean, the, the I, only spin on it was that it's like you know maybe he used the wrong emojis or whatever, and it's like okay, yeah, which he could clarify which emojis he intended to use on certain you know, pictures. I mean, he's like eighty. They made a point to, to reference him as a great grandfather, right? <laughs> And he, which like, we're sorry, a, a great grandfather might have used the wrong emojis. I mean, I used the, the last wrong emojis. Sen- wasn't the last sentence. He does not intend to stop. Yeah, yeah. I guess he does not intend to stop commenting on these kinds. That's of how they're photos. they're leaning into it. I mean, I have a couple of different takes on it. I'll be curious where you guys are before I get mine because I think my the take that I've kind of settled on, maybe the less popular, maybe less exciting version of it. Um, so I don't know. I've like hit me with what you got. Like, what is what is your take on this, there, Matt? Um, well, I've I've intentionally not been talking about this publicly. So, uh, but here I am on the podcast now. I mean, you started this, <laughs> and then you owe me two shows. So yeah, that's you knew right. This I do was owe you. I owe you two shows. Um, all right, a, a couple things. Um, 
Hold no. on, time out. Let me say for a second. That beard's looking nice, Brent. Like you oh, really? Yeah, you're feeling in pretty good in there. Yeah. You said there's no video on right now. That's but true. Yeah, hit, I've, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of in my lounge wear with a beard, and I, I did wear my 1984 Al Gore for U.S. Senate shirt. And uh, fun fact, anybody know who he ran against in 1984? Randy McNally. Mm. No, that's Vic- funny. Victor Ash. Ah. Victor Ash, yeah. And Al Gore got 60% of the vote statewide. Isn't that crazy? Anyway. Um, back to McNally. A couple things to say. Um, first of all, if he were a private citizen and interested in young gay men and expressing his interest in them, I mean, that's totally fine for him as a, I mean, no, nobody's hating on that. Uh, what makes it ironic or hypocritical, however, is that he's been doing this while also simultaneously basically pushing an anti-LGBT agenda. Um, second thing I would say is that I think that the story's not over yet. I think there's more things to come. That's one of the reasons I've tried to just not comment about it. And I think a lot of Democratic folks across the state have just not commented about it because we don't know what else is to come. Um, what I, I didn't realize how old he was. I didn't know that fact of him. And... I also didn't really, I hadn't really put any thought into the consideration is that, get down to it, he may be the most powerful person in the state of Tennessee government. Yeah, probably. I mean, with the way the state of Tennessee is set up, he The legislature is stronger than the governor. Right. Yeah. And he is the head of half of the legislature, so, mm-hmm. you know, I He's at least half of the most powerful person in the world. Yeah, or in, in, the, in, in the state. In Tennessee, yeah. Um, anyway, so, and, and another thing I would say is, again, there's lots of details yet to come out, but one of the questions I have is that apparently this young man is 20 years old, and he says in one of the articles or the interview that it started three years ago. All right, so I'm going to interrupt with what is it? Started commenting, sending messages, things of that nature three years ago. And so that would make him 17 years old, while the person sending him these messages and things would be 76 uh, and I, I don't necessarily like to throw the word groomer around, uh, and I'm not doing that now. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that that is something that needs to be explained and figure out the timeline of that. Cause I think that is pretty problematic in, in multiple ways. Uh, and then after that, I would just say, you know, I, I feel a little bad for his communications staff because they're the ones having to write these statements out and figure it out and. You know, to give them credit, I mean, they owned it. In a lot of PR world, I'm sure that people would have just blamed it on an intern or said, oh, he's been hacked or something like that. But no, it's almost like they've doubled down right. and said, I no, was... he does not intend to stop doing this. All right. So that's what lead, That's part of what leads me to my take on the whole thing. All okay. right. So, you know, in the in, in the Tennessee Holler version of the story, they I, I think they even said they didn't bother contacting his office because they knew they wouldn't give him a straight answer, mm-hmm. which is – keen journalism skills right there um you know at least do the cnn move and say you contacted him or contact reach out to him and then 25 minutes later write the story and say they didn't respond mm-hmm. you know you don't have to wait for them to respond apparently because that's another journalistic thing that apparently doesn't exist anymore um but you know and so they talked at length to this franklin character um and to the point i saw there was i guess they did a a, a live inter- like a podcast interview or something with them because there's a video of them talking to him. It's really funny because he's doing like a Zoom call on his phone and he's walking around his bedroom mm-hmm. while he's on it or whatever. Which is, you know, an influencer of his like. I figured he'd have a better setup than just a, a, an <laughs> iPhone. But, you know. A setup like this. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't that great either. But anyway. So um, what got me and what, what kind of started leading me towards my take on it is that I almost want to give McNally the benefit of the doubt into saying that this is just – politics this is just like what is a politician if not a salesman for themselves and so as you run down the gamut of it and you say okay well these at least in his mind this kid was a constituent of his at some point whether he doesn't still live in tennessee is what it said further down in the story but he just has a a friends list on his social that he just interacts with because especially in the 20 something demographic who is dropping thirst bombs all over the internet all the time obviously they're looking for what validation likes shares comments feel good about themselves through this thing right and so and and, and to me it's clear in the quote from this this franklin kid is as he said i'm trying to find it in the article right now but it was something along the lines is like i just thought he was a sweet old man or whatever 
You know, and so while we know because we've talked about it at length and we pay attention to it, McNally is one of the strongest people in the state of Tennessee who's actively destroying, tr- attempting to destroy the LGBTQ community in the state. Mm-hmm. Well, this kid doesn't even know that. Mm-hmm. He's not aware of that at all. He just thinks it's a sweet old man. Now, if this kid happened to bother to still be in district and vote, and he sees for state senator or whatever, oh, that's that sweet old man that, that <laughs> says nice things to me on on the internet. <laughs> Like that, that t- I, it, it tracks to me. I th- uh, I think that's quite some spin. Uh, I think that's the best possible scenario. I don't think that's necessarily the scenario. I don't know if it's the truth or not either. I I'm mean, some saying. of the photos that he's posted, I don't see why. I think people understand what the fire, fire, heart, heart. You turn a rainy day into sunshine. And and funnier, rainbows. I don't think he said and rainbows because that would have been too funny. Well, I don't know. The whole thing's too damn on the nose, so he might have said it. Um, I just I, – and I don't think the story's over either. So I, I don't think disagree with you more, there. And I, and, I, and I think the fact that him trying to own it so quickly may even indicate that there's maybe right. something else. Okay, okay yeah, that. you got me, blah, 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 moving on. Yeah. Because I don't want you to dig any deeper. Because I, I, uh, yes, some of the rumor mill has that that I am attached to, for lack of a better word, has indicated something similar as well. Which again, that's like it's too on the nose, though. It's like, um, like, like. Uh, I, th- I think, I think, what it comes down to is he doesn't know how to use social media. I don't know if he knew that people could see the comments. Um, but from my perspective, and from a number of other people's perspective, it seems to me what the comments are on the photos seem to be pretty clear. What was being communicated oh no he did he said uh, uh, you rainbows. could turn rainy day into rainbows and sunshine yep yep heart, heart, and, heart, and, fire, and and fire, and and we, we're not on video right now but the photo is a a straight up straight up his ass crack yeah and that's uh, <laughs> yeah i don't that's for him to explain i mean yeah and, and again like the the uh, the very apparent hypocritical stance of it is very easy to poke at and pick at and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, I don't know. Like, is it, he, is and, and, it? And again, I would go back to the fact that if the timeline, I mean, I, I'm not making any vast statements about it, but the, someone should look into that timeline because that's See, a problematic timeline. But well, but and I agree with you that, but that, that again is part of what I'm curious about, because I think when you were and I were, when, when Sam and I were talking about it a couple of days ago, um, is I'm sure the Tennessee Hollers doing their best to try to, but like, is there a way that you can go down McNally's, what McNally has been commenting and posting on and stuff like that, that aren't his own posts. Cause like, it's easy. You go and look at his thing and you just uh, go down. Yeah. But however to do that, I'm sure it's doable or you just go when you, yeah, I will say that there are other people who have gotten comments from him that I, right. Because, but, but on the, on, on they're the, not as racy as these photos, but on the, um, Implication of possible not grooming, grooming age timeline that. thing. That's why I said not <laughs> yes, no, yes. Um, is that's, well, that's like Donald Trump when he says, but, I didn't say meatball run. Why would I say meatball run? <laughs> but I think, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's, I think on, on the, the ang- on that angle, if we can go in, back in time and follow the timeline of, well, what was the conversation when this kid was 17? Yeah, yeah, was, that what, would be. I mean, there's apparently. I mean, if there were it, messages or right, yeah. was it uh, this 17 year old showing pictures of his ass and the same kind of comments? Because that's 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 a little bit more in line with what you're not implying. Implying. Um, whereas if it's just this 17 year old kid that he knows, because they're apparently again in the story, there was there's some semi direct connection from Knoxville, from the portion of Knoxville that <laughs> McNally technically yeah. is, has constituents in and this kid and, and, and whatever. And so, mm-hmm. I, again, I, I, I mean, I, he used to represent a much smaller part of Knox County. Now he represents a much larger part of Knox County. Knox County. Right, and had, it dawned on me today, actually, that um, when they redistricted, they gerrymandered um, XYZ bar into his district. Huh. Right. Which means that I am now in his district professionally. Mm-hmm. So my oh your your new establishments over there in Happy Holler yeah wow okay like like uh, oh is it where the old Time Warp place mm-hmm. used to be? oh wow yeah okay. so I didn't know this so Central Cinema is on the one end of the building Time Warp was he did not pay me to talk about this Time Warp was <laughs> uh, Time Warp was three units the end unit is zero zero organic wine bar yeah and then we're the middle two units 
Oh, uh, well, one of those units was India's campaign headquarters yeah. in 2019. She told me that when I ran into her down there. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I ran into her and uh, Commissioner Jay coming out of uh, Flats and Taps. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, this was months ago. This was this when was, was when he's thinking about running for mayor. Yeah, throwing it out there and see what happens. And then it uh, and then shortly after that, I'm not saying that that meeting was about that. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm strongly implying it, but I'm not saying it. <laughs> uh, but shortly after that, he announced that he was not yeah. intending to run for mayor. Speaking of anyway, it, so what's your take on it? What's your take uh, on it? Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, Sam. Uh, my initial thought: I was surprised he even had an Instagram account. I was like that. <laughs> That's what I, my initial thought. Oh, this is fake. I was like, this old man doesn't have an Instagram account, let alone he's got an Instagram account. He's a great account. grandfather. Well, I didn't think he would have an Instagram account like in his official title. Yeah. And I'm like, that just doesn't make sense. I'm like, okay, you've got a, a Twitter account maybe as as your title where you can do mm-hmm. media and stuff. Statements, but yeah. I was like, well, how does Instagram help you in the political field? Because, mm-hmm. again, that is a hell of a question, too, is like if you're going to do this – your official lieutenant governor Insta account, <laughs> the, not the verified account, right? Not just a some just just an Randy alt, McNally, an, or an alt account or right, something. Right. Yeah, which again, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that says. Like, <laughs> I mean, it says he's either. But I mean, but like, I think it was you that told me that he's very prolific. Like, he's very. He is. Yeah, he posts a lot on social he, media. He posts and interacts a lot. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, and, and I will say, uh, from from my perspective as a party chair and as someone who works on campaigns, my strong, very strong recommendation, almost um, order to most of our candidates is you do not run your own social media. You let a staff member or you let someone else run your social media. Because stuff like this could happen. So, I mean, he's got – did he just get reelected last year? Oh. He did, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, the end of this end of this term, he's going to be 80, 73, or 83, mm, 84? Yeah, he'll be 83, yeah. Do we think he's going to run again? No. Because, <laughs> I mean, uh, that, and here's the one that's crazy to me, too, is that the East Tennessee Republican whatever Facebook Yeah, you group, told me that. I haven't seen that. It's only like 1,100 people, so I don't they know. They think exactly everybody's a rhino. Yeah, they called him a rhino, and they want him out. And then apparently, like, they had a link to an article. Why is he a rhino? Because I mean, he's gay. Like I don't know. Or, or he's nice to gay people, I guess, is yeah. probably the, he, the more generous way to say it. And one of his, or one of the articles of his response, it may be that Channel 5 uh, that was quoted in some of his responses, that uh, he said he does have, like, friends that that are of that oh, yeah. persuasion. Oh, yeah, we got that video. We he on, he said, I support them. Yeah. And he says that his his views have evolved, but he still has the same policy views. So I don't really. That's great. I'm not anti-gay. That's great. But why do you pass anti-gay bills? Well, we pass bills that kind of limit certain things. There's very uncomfortable in those video. bills. This is the most yeah. anti-gay. Legislature in the entire country. And you oh, I don't it. think so. And meanwhile, you're commenting I mean, on that's pictures a fact. that are very Adam, what undeniable facts. I just want to know if you have any comments, I guess. On what? On the posts, I guess. What do you want to say? On these posts, right here. These posts. The comments try to encourage people on my <laughs> post, and I try to support people just because he's gay. I also have friends that are gay, uh, relatives that are gay, but I don't feel any animosity towards gay people. I mean, obviously. I mean, I think that's the thing that we're that the, that the problem here is. It's the, it's the you're you're pretty clearly okay. It's the opposite of animosity, right? Yeah. It's the it's the you know, in my new phrasing, it's the square of the circle for me here on on how you can obviously heart, heart, be pretty cool with gay people, fire. but also do these things legislatively. Mm-hmm. You turn a rainy day into sunshine and rainbows. And here's my problem. Like, here's the real problem with this whole thing to me is that. Um, like the normal old school me and at least the, the watching the federal government do things kind of thing says when we have a big shit show like a legislative session that is this because mm-hmm. I mean realistically you know we pay attention Sam pays some pays attention you still watching sessions I and stuff? I haven't caught any of the new okay um, you know what else is like like the, the old school me would say that this is intentionally distracting this is intentionally be like hey Look over here. Get all pissy about this thing because we're doing stuff over here mm-hmm. while you're not paying attention. Oh, I don't think he did this intentionally. I'm not saying him. I'm just saying the whole, the whole legislative session, the okay. whole Zachary. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, Zachary, yeah. I mean, like Zachary putting it up, Governor Lee being like hot on, like, you know. And again, going back to what I was saying earlier, like Governor Lee for 
for political purposes, could have just not signed this and it still gets through. And so he can still yeah. get the end that he wants and he could still somewhat brag about it. Mm-hmm. But then he also can have a little bit of a step back when he gets attacked yeah. on it. But well, I'm no, sure he he's... Was, remember the picture with him and drag from high school too? Uh, they, they made a t-shirt and I won it. <laughs> I'm sure that... I guess this... What's next? Mm. Things always come in threes. That's, that's always different. Always come in threes. That is, that is totally different. I can't believe you would even... <laughs> Yeah, implicate the two in the same sentence. That was his response. Yeah, I guess what's different is he, when gay people do it, when he does it. Yeah, yeah that's that, what's different. That was just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's making a joke. It was for a school function. That that makes it okay. Yeah, yeah, it was on school grounds. <laughs> It was like senior prom or some kind of senior. Like thing. Pow- it was powder, powder puff. puff. Yeah. yeah, we do that. Oh, we did that at my puff, high school. Yeah. Powder I puff. I, I always thought it was kind of weird, though. I didn't do it. I remember it happening. I just don't remember ever paying attention to it. Like I never went to a powder puff. Um, yeah, but I mean, this legislature, it, 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 this session particularly, it's been like you can't keep up with all this stuff. I mean, no, and it's, it's really not particularly that's every session. That well, is yeah, what, yeah. That is but like, um, in my in my opinion, one of the biggest things to come out of this, besides the anti LGBT stuff. Is the 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 attack on self government and local governments? See, I, I I agree with you on that one, especially because it's my Elaine Davis that's put that that introduced one of them at least, mm-hmm. and like I agree with the principle of it. I just don't agree that the state should be the one to do it. The yeah. city of Knoxville should elect by district. It makes mm-hmm. no sense the way the city of Knoxville does it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, agree or disagree, I'm not here to talk about that. But, but it's not it the state. It should, be the, it should right. be the local it, level to right. decide that. Yeah. And so, like, and she doesn't even live in the city. So, I mean, the majority of the people that are going to vote on this bill don't live. Yeah, but she's in the, she's bringing it up. No one's asking for yeah, this, like, except for Eric. This came from Eric. How many how many Tennessee House members live in the city of Knoxville Sam, or, or Morristown? Sam, Gloria, any Hamblin County Democrats live in Knoxville? Well, Hamblin County has the same Ham, the the city of. Uh, Morristown? Morristown no, I don't know. has I don't the know same election live. process. It's only two in the state. Oh, really? I yeah. thought... Um, I think is what I was... Uh, I thought somebody else did, too. Well, apparently it's what they do in San Diego, too, I've heard. Well, then it's got to be bad, because that's California. Yeah, but they're like one of the more Republican cities in California. Well, it's because it's a military You know place. there are more people who voted for Trump in California than there are who voted for Trump in Tennessee? Sure, that makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the population of California is how many Tennessees? Uh, a lot. <laughs> um, anyway, what we're talking about. Oh, the, but yeah, but the, the other thing is Nashville, too. Like what they're just, just lambasting, uh, yeah, bombarding seen, Nashville. They're going to take away the airport authority. I mean, yeah, they're take away they're, the, they're the, forcing them down to like 20 council members. Yeah, they're, they're going to cut their city council in half. They're taking they away the authority of the city over the over the airport and they're taking away funding for the convention center. And so in my opinion, what's going to happen is the bond rating people on wall street that give out the municipal bonds. They're going to say, we're not going to do business with Nashville. We don't know. It's so in- unstable. And they're and this is coming at the same time that they're trying to build that $1 billion Titan stadium. Right. And it happened to the Titans. Didn't they lose their last five games? It's not about the football. Man. Okay, yeah. And they want a new stadium, huh? And they just built like the, the city, the city of Nashville built a new soccer field stadium for yeah. that football. But anyway, game. I mean, that's just a direct attack on self government, and it's so ironic that they call themselves the party of small government, local control, because they're not. I you're I, I agree with that one, I, and again, I think that's one that hasn't gotten the coverage that it deserves. But it's one of those too, though. Like, I just like it seems. I, I, I don't know. It's just one of those like nine out of ten people don't care. It doesn't make a difference to them. Yeah. Well, I learned. They don't to, see that it makes a difference. I learned to them, today too something about um, like they've taken away the rights of local municipalities to inf- like create and enforce their own like drainage and water water system, something like that. I'm not sure. I don't know. Basically, so developers don't have to abide by certain regulations. Yeah. I mean. It, hmm. I could maybe see a logical reason to do that at a at a broader level than a local municipality because till you flood over here, right? I was just saying, yeah, because the my like my runoff goes somewhere, and mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily stay in Knox County mm-hmm. as it as it continues. But um, but anyway, back to the, back to the session. I mean, the session has just been an attack on on um, local local government. Yeah, I've seen those. 
But I'm sure I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm sure there's so many that have some serious value that I'm missing in all this. Um, the third grade retention thing too. That is a big one. That's gonna. I mean, they're gonna fail. So many third graders. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not. I, I wouldn't advocate for it, but I don't really. I don't get it. Like I don't know the full. Extent there's a bench. Of it. I mean, there. I mean, from what I gather of it, is there's a benchmark that there, there. There's a benchmark of capability at at third, seventh, and eleventh grade or something like that. You should have Cat on to talk about it. She knows a lot more than I. Do. Okay, but I'm just saying that there's a ben, there's benchmarks, and if you can't hit the benchmarks, you're behind. Is essentially what they're doing. They do benchmark testing. They just finish benchmark testing for. Yeah, I, well, I think the big thing is people say it's year. based on one single test or something like that. Right, and I, I think that's a the overall structural issue. Sure. But the idea that you have kids that are advancing in grade levels who aren't at the current or yeah, last I'm not, year or I'm two, not, s- I'm not promoting. We just promote children. I'm just I'm promoting that we don't just base these huge life changing decisions off of one test. Well, I think but I, mean, I think part of the problem. I mean, I think realistically, the totality of this issue comes back to the last two and a half years of what's been happening in the world. COVID. Yeah. I mean. There's no, there's no way you could convince me that my kids don't haven't had issues with school. Oh yeah, as they come back from. Mm-hmm. I mean, even the even the year they were in, but the fully matched year, and then that whole lawsuit mess, and why we were one of the last counties somehow to still have masks on, and that whole thing <laughs> it um, kind of backfired. Yeah, <laughs> and so like the whole the like the, the, there's yeah there's there's no way that the, well I think that, that I think most that the, kids aren't behind at this point. I mean, I do think that virtual school proved to be detrimental to. Uh, the development. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Wow, hmm, I already drank that. Um, anyway, so but anyway, the session. Yeah, I mean, the session is just one thing after another. I don't know how you. I don't, I can't keep up with it. So I mean, I even. I mean, even when talking to Sam and Gloria, they're like, "There's just it's just so much all the time." Right, and it's I like all that. these fires. Like you got you address this, address that, address this, address that. Well, I mean, a good, perfectly good example is Briggs. Last year, or four years, three years ago, whenever the. Uh, uh, heartbeat bill. The yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, then now he says he didn't. He he, should, he didn't. He didn't read it. He didn't really read it. Yeah. Well, like I mean, isn't that like the whole thing? Your job. Like that. That's the whole thing. Like I mean, I would like. He could have picked I a no vote. I would. I would have. I would have accepted that. You know, I didn't think it was that big a deal or that important. It had enough political whatever for me. Because I didn't think they'd ever overturn Roe v. Wade. Like, if yeah. that was his, his take on it, I could accept that as one. But it's like, I didn't really read it. It wasn't that big a deal. Yeah, Moving well, on. I mean, I think the whole situation there is that politically for him, he couldn't vote against it. Right. I agree with that. But also, I don't know. You could at least, I mean, at least, you, you can't say it out loud, though. You can't be like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't read it. Yeah. I mean, we know that for the most part, that you guys don't read them all. Yeah. You can't read them all. It's impossible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We understand that. But don't say it out loud. <laughs> well, but I guess I, I mean, but honestly, it's a good thing because he's actually one of the ones that's kind of like, oh, we need to back off a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so, but that, I but, don't think I. I but that's I, just it, though. It's like if it's politically, in, if he was polit- like, unless he's already decided he's not running again, why is it politically feasible for him to make the stand now that he couldn't have made it in the first place if he would have bothered reading it? Hold on, you went back and forth so many times because Can if you he's say that again. Because now he's doing it, right? Now he's trying. Now he's pushing back. He's, on he's it. pushing back and yeah, being like, yeah, you know, yeah. I should have read it. I didn't do what I should have done. Yeah, that's uh, a little bit more extreme than I think we should have it. Let's back it off a little bit. That's mm-hmm. where he's at now. Mm-hmm. Well, it's still obviously not politically advantageous for him to do it. Obviously, yeah, no, he, he's he's exhorted or he's he's spending political capital trying to fix it now, and I give him I give it him that I appreciate him doing that. But but that's what I'm saying is though, if he's willing to do it now, why wasn't he willing to do it? Uh, Four I, years ago, well, or I think his other thing is true too. Is that he thought that they wouldn't overturn Roe v. Wade? Because, so has he said that? I just Kav- made that up. No, no, he said that he didn't okay. think that they would. Um, which I mean, Kavanaugh said that he wasn't going to, but then he did. So, well, he so. can't say whether he's going to or not because that doesn't mean anything. They're not allowed to talk about it. That's true. I like beer. That's Kevin. That's my Kavanaugh impersonation. Pretty good. Beer. I was really confused. I was like, I just gave you a glass of wine. No, no, what no. the fuck? I don't like beer, but Kavanaugh <laughs> likes beer. I like beer. Beer. Uh, I drink a beer. Uh, anyway, but the I, I don't think that there's going to come any exceptions out of the abortion bill this session. I would be very surprised if anything. I don't think so either. No. I don't think there's any. And it's really sad because we're, ours is probably the most strict of any in the, the, in the United States. The I most, mean, it's really sad. I mean, there, there are real examples now of 
women who are having pregnancies that could end their life and the life of the baby right. and they're having serious to flee the state right. yeah flee the state I am grateful and as much as I like as much as I argue to turn over and even though this would still fit into my version of the of a more appropriate version of governments um, I'm grateful that the idea that was floated a little bit last like t- telling the last year there was floating like oh, somebody's going to introduce a bill that if you leave the state and get an abortion and come back they're going to arrest you oh yeah I was worried about that they so far haven't done that I don't think you can do it Inter- I guess what interstate commerce clause or something. I'm saying like, that? like free it, travel. You can't yeah. you can't you can't gamble cards in the state of Tennessee. That is illegal. If we had a card game down here and then we were playing poker for cash, mm-hmm. and the cops found out about it, we go to jail for gambling <laughs> in the state of Tennessee. Especially if I'm acting as a casino and I'm taking a rake off the pot and doing all that kind of stuff, making it a profitable enterprise for me, which is yeah. also a tax evasion issue because I'm not paying taxes on profits gained because it's illegal because I have to do a black Sounds market. Sounds like you thought about this thing. before. Sure, I have. Um, <laughs> You know, but I can go to Vegas, like, or yeah. I mean, hell, I can go to North Carolina, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I can go gamble and win money and bring my winnings back, be taxed upon them, yeah, federally. And I don't say Tennessee wouldn't tax me, yeah, for bringing my money back, but I would be taxed upon them and what they. And the flip side, in North Carolina, you can't bet on sports. You can drive over to Tennessee border. That's so dumb. Bet on sports, drive back. Over. I hate the way they did that. Like, it's like, okay, cool. I like sports betting. Don't get me wrong. I still use my black market guy, but whatever. Um, I just like the whole, let's do make it online only. Like I, I understand it for the state's perspective. Cause then it's much easier to control. They can follow. Are they, there states that allow not online? I mean, any, any gambling state does like, I mean, again, you go to Harris, they have a, a, a sports book, which is, it's just a room where you go and walk up to the counter and place a bet. Oh really? Huh? And sit down and watch the game. I mean, uh, Vegas has whole Sounds rooms. Fun. All the casinos in Vegas have at least a room, if not multiple rooms, where it's just a, yeah. it's a cool sports bar. Except, well, I think it's funny. The bartender uh, takes not only your drink order; yeah. they take your, you know, Tennessee by four. I don't. I don't know if you're a baseball fan, but I just think it's really ironic that Pete Rose basically got excommunicated for betting on baseball. But now you watch a baseball game; it's like all the commercials, and they talk about it on the commentator. I mean, so it's, it's still like, a player, a player, and or manager in that case. Um, Versus a layperson is is a different animal because yeah, I mean there's some yeah, football yeah. there's some NFL players that got in trouble for betting on games in the NFL that they weren't in mm-hmm. because the NFL has a standard that says Can't as a player games. as a, as an employee of the NFL you cannot gamble on NFL. The only I, I bet on a NASCAR race once. I do. I like NASCAR races. I bet on a few UT game football or baseball or uh, UT basketball games as of late. Mm-hmm. I'll take the over on some UT baseball games. Holy shit. <laughs> They had like a 17 run third inning a couple nights ago or something oh, like yeah, that. That's crazy. It was something obnoxious. You done any sports betting, Sam? No. Don't care for it. No. Cam's, Sam's a card guy. Oh, really? Okay. What yeah. do you play? He likes the poker. Ooh. Are you good? Not really. Oh, come on. Don't be humble. He is. He's super patient. It's yeah. annoying. He's hard to play with because he just sits and sits and you sits. You seem like you have a good it's poker. It's advantageous, though. You, you seem like Sometimes. you have a good poker personality. I think like you'd a be. Straight face. I think, you're a better, I think you'd be a better cash game player if you played a lot of cash games. Maybe. Because. Of your patience. I'd li- I've never been to Harris. I'd like to go to Harris. They're going to open one, one over in... Aren't they going to open one in Tennessee or something? Yeah. Or in Bristol? I think it's almost open, but okay. it's only going to be... Hard rock, yeah. I think it's only like sports betting and some stuff for now. I think there's, uh, there's one. Uh, there's years, so like there's the a new one in Kentucky. The, Where? Uh, it's just across the border. Um, I went to one yeah. in Mississippi on the I've been river. Getting, I've been getting flyers for it. Like, I got a flyer for it. It's the Mint, Mint Gaming Room or something like that. Huh, interesting. I got a flyer in the mail for it. I don't know how or why. I've only been to Las Vegas one time, and it was just because I was traveling through. I didn't really like it. It was so hot and just traffic. And just... But anyway, the the whole going down the gambling rabbit hole yeah, is yeah, that yeah. I can go to Vegas <laughs> where it's legal to gamble oh, yeah, yeah, and gamble yeah. and do that whole thing and then come back to Tennessee, and yeah. I'm not. it's not a crime. Yeah. Even though it would be a crime if I did it in Tennessee, I didn't do it here. So Yeah, yeah. You know, and so like yeah. well, I don't know of any states. I mean, I know of people have been talking about it, but I don't know of any states that have enacted a. I don't think border. You, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you can. Yeah, I don't think that is within. I don't think that is would be constitutionally. If it were, they would do it. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm just saying. I don't think it's constitutionally viable to to even until the Supreme Court says it is. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah, I'd have to go read my constitution again. I at least feel like Neil Gorsuch wouldn't go for that. I don't Kavanaugh know. would. I, I think, and I, I get. It. I, I think that I, I don't even want to, fuck. Where do I go with that one? I hope. I mean, that would be tragic. That would be at, yeah. At, at be, pe- women would die. Women would die. I mean, I'm and not my sure. wa- my wife had a pregnancy. She had preeclampsia, and luckily 
we had doctors that like she was able to give birth and our son Henry's fine. But I mean, even conversations we've had about like, when do we want to get pregnant again? And like, well, what if there are complications? We need to be ready to travel, things like that. I mean, it's kind of scary. And have a go bag. Yeah, exactly. And that's the reality of it. So, but I just don't like, um, I mean, not just for an abortion issue, just across the board. Like, I mean, like our stupid gambling example. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, it takes one state that decides that, you know, like, I don't know, Utah or something's like, you know what? You can't gamble anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't, I don't know. That's, I just don't, I don't, I don't. Picking on the Mormons, are you? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just don't. I don't think you could get away. I just don't. I, even with I'm not an the, attorney, but I, I agree even with the Supreme insane. Court the way it sits and stuff like that. I don't. I don't think that we are that crazy. We're pretty. Cra- we're crazy. Yeah. I mean, you can go to Canada and do stuff that's legal in Canada. So I'm and saying, come back. Yeah. Let's go to Amsterdam and get her, get her hash on and <laughs> come back chock full of it in our bloodstream. I guess they could maybe. I mean, that was UT's rule. Like, you can't have. There's no alcohol on campus at UT. Yeah. You you count as a vessel. Oh really? They yeah. could test you? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. I mean, I don't know if they. I, I, I don't know. Surely if they, they don't do that anymore. Um, but anyway, so I mean, I, I well, don't speaking know. Of, that's some bullshit. Your city, your your city people suck. Why? I'm really mad about the fucking UT football stadium thing. Oh, about the whatever came of that? I haven't kept up with it. Oh, uh, they're nothing. They're fine. They paid like a. They they paid a. Oh a, well, then what are you upset about? They, they paid a fine because uh, I because. I have people that I know who own bars and restaurants mm-hmm. who've lost their liquor and beer license for extended. Oh, of time. you're saying that it was a double standard? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Which I tried to, I, I tried to put myself in a place where, like, at least just say it out loud. Just say UT is more important than you are bar X. That's at this place. No, I mean that's a fair you criticism. Know. Yeah, uh, you know, because I mean, again, like one of the one of the arguments I make is like, think about that. if you hold a, if you hold a liquor or beer or liquor license. Yeah, the actions of your clientele, even if you didn't get them drunk, are on you. So if I have a brawl yeah. that spills out of my establishment into the street and does damage to somebody else's property, that's on you. That's on my beer permit and mm-hmm. my liquor license. Yeah. Now the last the the game that kicked off this whole mess was that Alabama game, and there was a whole lot of shit going down. Mm-hmm. That as the establishment, one of the establishments serving alcohol, they're on the hook for those activities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except they're not, because it's Tennessee football. It's a hundred thousand people. You can't expect them to have the same rules as the rest of us. Yeah. It's fucking horseshit. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, makes me uh, angry. Anyway, I took us the, off topic. The politics of shutting down beer at UT games, my goodness. I mean, the boys get what the boys want, so I get it. We got new tree houses going up in South Knox County. Um, we have a baseball stadium getting built. Are they going to let them build those? Yeah, they, they proved that this week. I went over there actually and paid the money for like they do a tour. It's like twenty dollars and stuff. You know, I, to tell you the truth, it was a little underwhelming. I would imagine. It's only like six ho- six houses. And then six? also they gave me the tour, but I thought like I could have just parked my car and walked around here for free. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I've never I haven't been down there. Yeah. It's you've been over there so I mean it doesn't yeah. bother me. Like I think it's I, I don't I don't have an issue with the premise of what he's trying to do down there. I have an issue like, you know, as uh, as I understand I just think, it. I also think it's funny that it's total like it's on the border edge of copyright infringement. It's just like as far as you can get Without going the line of copyright infringement, right? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, it's obvious. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But short of having characters and or graphics that are direct ripoffs, because I don't know if you could say the architectures. I mean, it's again, it's obvious, but I don't know if you could say that there's an ownership to said architecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You know, I mean, I could build a, I could build a, a copy of the of. I don't know, uh, Westminster, you know, somewhere, if I had the money to do it, it's not like the royal family could sue me for stealing their fucking <laughs> what you building one? designs. What if you built one in the – think of something that would be, hu- like, huge and, like, like you, but you built it in your backyard. Well, like a replica of – I don't know. Like, what if you built a replica well, I mean, of the Sun Sphere in your <laughs> backyard? The, the, the Sun Sphere is 10 minutes down the road, but you build a Sun Sphere in your backyard. I like uh, that, that reminds me of just something that just pissed me off. That there's a farmer's commercial. Oh, yeah. Farmer's insurance or whatever. And it's like, you know, they're Tennessee company and they're talking, they have all these, like, you know, they're flashing through all these different images of the beauty of Tennessee and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, like a black lady playing guitar in, in front of the House of Blues in Memphis. Mm-hmm. Um, 
some whatever going on Broadway in Nashville, and then some jackholes kayaking on the Tennessee River in front of UT. It's like <laughs> it's like you know institution of, of Nashville, institution of Memphis, a fucking school. I'm not. I'm I'm bitter on the UT thing. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Like I really. Yeah. I, what do you think about the bridge? I don't. Whatever. I wow. mean, I'm not a city resident, so I guess I'm not paying for it. You're, you're I don't a think, federal I, taxpayer. I don't think. I think you're a federal taxpayer. I, yeah, I'm going to be paying a lot of those fucking taxes this year. Um, I don't. I mean, again, the state, the the state portion of paying for it, and the state's relationship with the University of Tennessee and stuff like that. That makes sense to me. It's fine. It's an amenity for a thing yeah. that you know. And it, it gets to me. It gets to the question. I don't know if there was an article. Um, Floating around, there was a, it was an op-ed from a student who was leaving UT. Oh to, yeah, I saw that. Julie Deacon. Gotro posted that in Compass right. today, and it was not. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of. I didn't really quite understand the the complaint per se, other than college is expensive, which I thought everybody already knew that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little confused because there are some things in place for a person with the educational, the high school credentials that this person had, that didn't seem to line up with what this person was getting. Mm-hmm. Um, but. You know, the university, whatever whatever the goal of the university is, is a goal that apparently is worthwhile for the people who spend the money on it, whether it's the state or the donors and whatever yeah. combination of things. Like, I don't, like, I'm concerned. Like, I realized the whole, like, the the, the power that UT has. Like, I think we were, like, we were, I was joking about it with uh, Scott and Jesse off air when we were taping their show a couple of weeks ago. And it's like, it's like on the hierarchy of things. Mm-hmm. Like, if the University of Tennessee wants a piece of property that the city owns... Can they pull in an eminent, eminent domain, domain on the city? Like, I know they can pull eminent domain on me and you. Yeah, yeah. And I, well, think, I don't know what they say. I think Scott's joking. The answer was if you go in order, it's the railroads, <laughs> federal property, state property, city property. Uh-huh. And so the university is state property. So, yes. Okay. It was yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, the take yeah. that Scott had. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it would be a very it would be a very interesting situation if it ever came up. Not that it's ever, I'm sure it's happened somewhere at some point, but Mm -hmm. at least in Knoxville history, it's, it's not occurred yet. Yeah. But that's like the problem. Like the problem I have with the bridge is the city is going to spend any money on it Mm -hmm. under the guise of, well, we're trying to get South side better. We're trying to attach South side back to Knoxville, Mm -hmm. make it feel like it's one city, blah, 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 blah. And the reason we can invest this money is because it's going to raise property values. Those property values hit the tax rolls. We get our money back. Yeah. Well, if the university goes over there and just picks up all that property, mm-hmm. we don't. Yeah, fair point. Because the university pay doesn't taxes. pay property taxes. Yeah. And so... And they can do what they want. Right. And they can, right. They and also they, don't have They to, don't have to follow code. They don't have to abide by zoning code either. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I greatly appreciate the University of Tennessee. Go Vols. Uh, I'm not an alumnus like you are, um, but I am a great admirer of the university. I think that the university needs to remember that the city of Knoxville and the people that live in Knoxville exist outside of the university. Right. And I think the city of Knoxville and the county, for that matter, need to... Assert themselves. Assert a themselves and say, you know, because like I always make, I always make the the, the comparison to is like you go to Atlanta, mm-hmm. Georgia Tech is there. Yeah, you go to Knoxville, it's next to the university. Mm-hmm. Like it is, it is the university. It's this is where the that orange team plays football that mm-hmm. you see on TV. Yeah. And the city that's attached to it, yeah. Where it's like, yeah, Georgia Tech's over there, and then you got yeah. the Emory, aquarium, and you got yeah. this other stuff here, and you know, you got all the cool things that are Atlanta. Yeah, no, and I think that, university. I mean, we're here. we're not you're we're not really even a college town. I mean, Athens, Georgia is a college town. Chapel Hill, North Carolina is a college town. Right. I think we are a ju- city that has a college in it, but I think that sometimes the university thinks that we're a college town, and they. Just get to do what they want to do. I, I agree. I think I think we've been for a long time at a threshold that needs to be crossed. I think there is. I think the size of the university versus the size of the city was close enough or whatever that the assertions of the university made sense. Mm-hmm. Where I think the size of the city of Knoxville is getting to the point where it's like it doesn't really make sense to just say okay, yeah, yeah. whatever you want. And you again, can keep your beer permit, but I'll take this other guys. And I again, again, I appreciate the University of Tennessee. It is the biggest economic driver in our region. Um, it, I'm not trying to say we should, but it. What's frustrating raise it to is the ground that or yeah, no, no. What's frustrating is like like admitting more students than you have housing for. I think that's a little disrespectful to the people that live in Knoxville because that's driving our rents up. That's driving our housing up. 
when we already have a housing shortage, and you're, what, and you're admitting more students than you can even house, I think that's disrespectful to the people that live here. Right, and I think I think I, I have a fun one, and I think you'll like this one, and it's very non-libertarian. Uh, I think if uh, if anybody comes to the city for a, 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 a an adjustment on zoning, mm-hmm. and anywhere in their pitch they say there's student housing involved, then they have to have an equal number of affordable housing. I think it's a fair point. That would just be, that would be the pitch because you know how many would get built. Zero. <laughs> because it's like, I'm going to build 200 units, 100 of them have to be affordable housing. I, I'm not going to make enough off the 100 that the students make to make it worth me building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm t- like, I'm over it. Like, I, I, but I, like, I'm over this idea. They're talking about doing the old Hyatt building into another new student housing. Everything that's all the cool new construction that they did on the south side, which is cool. It looks nice. It makes the south riverfront very attractive, but it's all student housing. Mm hmm. And it's like, well, other people live in this town, and other people want the urban. permanently live here permanent, right? Not and the, for and the urban seven part of it, like, like Knoxville has spent a lot of energy and effort trying to make the city proper more appealing for people to live and work and do all those things. Yeah. And every bit of housing is getting eaten up by students intentionally. Maybe not by the city. What's per the se, but What's the Hyatt building? What are you talking about with that? The weird little triangle, half triangle. Oh, building. that. Oh, that's going to be student Marriott? housing. There's a guy that's there. There's a there. I can't remember exactly. How that it ugly was. building. Yeah, there there was somebody who who had who was pitching the idea of renovating into like you know um, efficiency apartments, basically. Hmm. Which I mean, that's what an I mean, a hotels a bunch of efficiencies anyway with just a really bad kitchen. Just put a little yeah. bit more kitchen into it, and you've got a decent efficiency apartment. Yeah, there you go. I think it's a cool ass building. I disagree. It needs to get cleaned up, maybe a paint job or something like that. But I think I've never been inside actually. But the outside, I think it's a cool shape. Like it's got uh, a little I mean, to it. I'm not a big fan of like modernist architecture. Oh, um, I mean, it's it's cooler looking than the. That's city something I wish I knew more. That's true. That's the, that's the <laughs> ugliest building in town. <laughs> I wish I knew more about architecture. That's something I wish I knew more about. I mean, I say, I mean, but yeah, you're right. The city county building. Oh my gosh, ranking nicest to ugliest buildings downtown. My goodness, actually, and you're you know what? You're the one who told me too. It's like that's a prime piece of real estate. Oh, Jesus, you're right. Yeah. You're right. That's a prime piece. Yeah. Of real instead estate. of selling the East Town to Amazon, we should have moved City County into, Am- into the old East Town, uh, in yeah. the old East Town Mall, and then sold that building off for something cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, again, but I like I don't like what they're doing with the AJ building and that twenty year debacle of trying to get that off of the. Oh yeah, what's the, happening the there now? I, it, it's going to be you're apartments. More up to date on all this stuff. Than it's going to be apartments for a while, but it's going to be a boutique hotel. You know, and it's like I get it. Hotels are cool, and they're uh, they're they're a better profit rearing enterprise than 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 long term housing. I get that, but I don't know. It's a cool building. You should have people live there. Live there. Yeah. That's where uh, Hank Williams Sr. spent his last night. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so, I don't know. I'd just like to, like... I don't... What, when did the school system move into there? Move in? Yeah, I know they've moved out, but when did they move uh, in? I think it was, like, the 80s, 90s, or something like that. Interesting. So I think the story I heard on it, if I, I don't remember correctly, but the history, as I understand it, it was the AJ Hotel for yeah. a long-ass time. Yeah. Um, and then when they shut it down, it just sat. Wow, and I think the city have either took it for tax purposes yeah. or bought it fairly cheap. Interesting. And this was back in the area where downtown was. Yeah, nothing. I don't think that I don't think that people in Knoxville appreciate the fact that like twenty, thirty years ago, downtown was dead. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, like, uh, I mean, I, I didn't even know about well, that, but just from what I've heard. Right. Well, I was talking to Ashley Caps. I had Ashley Caps in earlier last week, this week, whatever. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and I was like, I remember when downtown Knoxville. If you were there past five o'clock. You're probably up to no good because mm-hmm. there was nothing to do down there. You sh- there was nothing open, like there was a, a subway and one actual restaurant. That was it. And, like, it's like it was, yeah, and he and I think he was like yeah, Regis. I was like that's not really downtown. <laughs> you know, I mean that's not like I mean it's on Gay Street, yes, yeah. but it's not like that stretch. And now it's, it's like across the full, train tracks, right? Yeah, before the viaduct rebuild and all those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I moved to Knoxville in 2012, so downtown was kind of happening by when I got here. But, I mean, everything I've heard, like, downtown was just, like, nothing. I mean, my old manning just doesn't like it anymore because I don't like all the people that are down there. Yeah. Like, I don't like having to... I'm afraid... I don't want it to turn into, like, Broadway in Nashville, you know? Like, no one in Nash- that lives in Nashville right. goes there. Well, sure. Yeah. But, I mean... It's not for people that live in Nashville. Right. That is why it exists the way it exists, because... Of who actually goes down there, but I mean, I think, you know, I mean, we've got enough. 
don't know. It's nice. I like. I'm. I'm. I am happy for Knoxville for what it's become. Yeah. Some uh, something I want to ask you. You were UT. Sam, did you go to UT? No. Oh, okay. Well, did you ever hang out on the strip when you were like high school or yeah, a little or bit? No. I, what? So I know there's been this big discussion about the changing of the strip and what that's looked like over the last twenty, thirty, even fifteen years. What's your What's y'all's opinion on what the strip is now and what it was? I really thought it was. I mean, I guess it was "quote unquote" happening, but I didn't go down to the, the handful of clubs. That I mean, I worked there, down but... there when it was on its last throes of kind of the unique coolness that it. Had what year? Been. What year would you say that is? Like two thousand five, six, something. Okay. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you work? That old Charlie's that just tore down. Oh, okay. So that you think that was like the last I mean, breath, of right? Because the... you had like like um, you had uh, Muse's Mu- Muse's Music Hall, which was. Um, God, what I don't remember what it, what it is now. Um, there's the, where the Taco Bell is. Mm-hmm, yeah, right, on the same on on the campus side of the strip next to the Taco Bell. Oh, is it got the like it upstairs? Was Buffalo, it was Buffalo Wild. No, that's Long Branch, which okay. that's the new Long Branch, which is so old as shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, the other side of the Taco Bell, um, which it was Buffalo Wild Wings for a little while, and then it changed into some. It's been like four places in the yeah. last ten years. There's still something now. I think it's like the library. Not the library. What was it? The library's downtown. I, I Old drove, College Inn. I, no, I drove by no, the other day. That down. And it had a funny, like, undeclared is what it's called now. It's a uh, bar, whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's a funny little campus bar name. I like to kind of I appreciate the name. But um, but it's music real. I'm like, you used to have real decent acts come play there. Yeah. Like, um, well, I've heard that, like, R- like, in the 80s, REM used to come to the strip all the time. Right. And, like, yeah. You know, and so, like, you used to have, like, an actual nightlife scene that wasn't just flat campus drunkenness yeah. of, of the movie style. Mm-hmm. Like, you used to actually have some, it had some nightlife some character to though. it. Yeah, yeah. Where you had, you had some venues, you had some dance clubs, you had some of the different stuff, but it wasn't just a, you know, quarter beer night and that's all anybody gave a shit about, mm-hmm. which is what it was becoming when I was down there. Yeah. Um, and so it, it just, I mean, it's just gone downhill from there. And I don't, and I, I don't think that was not by design to drop that double negative real hard. Yeah. Um, well, um, I mean, now you go down there, it's just like chains and right. it's, and then they're tearing stuff down and building. I mean, did you read that Knox TN today article that was about like the, it was basically like rest in peace, the strip, like it's no longer the strip. But I mean, it's like, well, like it hasn't been the strip a for yeah. a long time. Mm-hmm. And those of, those of us that remember it when it was the strip, yeah. we don't go down there. Yeah. I mean, like my wife has worked at the, what what's now Hannah's, um, Till about three or four years ago, Mm -hmm. I didn't go down there. Yeah, (laughs) I rarely went. Like if I went, it's not for you anymore. If I went down there, it was like a hey, I forgot my medication. Can you bring my medication for me? Because I have a because I I'm I'm I'm, I forgot my whatever because I'm I'm coming down. I got over the flu or whatever. I'm taking some. You know, like that's the only time I would ever go down there. Um, Because I mean, you know, that's that. the scene had become literally it's just where can I get the drunk as fastest kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It became like every ve- every place that was down there was trying to throw a house party because that's the only way you could get people in. Yeah. There's one deli down there that's still going. What is that place? I ate there a couple months ago. Gus's? Gus's. Yeah, Gus's is still there. And they yeah. got cheap food. It's good food. Yeah. I, I miss their I, – I like I, I like that place. I wish there were more places like that where it's like they're not trying to be anything. It's just like it's just, you know, food for Here's a solid bucks. meal. Get the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so, like, I mean, I think it's I, – I, I'll agree that it's disappointing that everything that's left down there or getting put in down there, it's, yeah. you know, it's – But there's a time for everything is the book of Ecclesiastes. But it's says. like cookout. Like, you have, like, like, cookouts and all these little chain kind of whatevers. It's no – there's no – Chipotle. Right. You know, yeah. like, the the last standing of the original whatevers was Stefano's. And it's gone now. And it's gone now. I, I used to like Stefano's. It was I never good. liked their pizza. Really? But, I mean, even that, though. I mean, Stefano's is a – is a, what, a Burleson pro- – property uh was it burleson i don't know and uh mike uh, chase i don't know it's one of mike the chase, mike chase used to be a democrat it's one of the two or three big you know burleson chase good folks. food guys yeah somebody told me mike chase was selling Cal-Hans? uh say that again copper seller Cal- copper seller somebody told me he was selling it or maybe the one yeah. on the strip uh, i think i know so. i would hmm 
I mean, the, Mike Chase used to be a Democrat. He's a these, Republican now. He used big, to be a big Democratic donor. These big money, I mean, these big money developers. That Burleson's are going always been a Republican. These big money do, uh, developers that are going down there, they're, they're going to buy anything and get their. They're out of it. state too. That's the most frustrating thing. I mean, like I don't quite understand the premise of you're like a a, a near campus developer specialist. Like I don't understand what that is. What like, do you mean? I mean, I mean, what? Like I don't like. You're building, oh, like you're building I got a, something in Tuscaloosa, Chapel Hill, Knoxville. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. People are into that. I mean, I, I mean, I get the idea of well, when you go pitch it to the city, especially when you're asking for adjustments on zoning and stuff like that. It's yeah. like here's one we did here. Here's a good example of what we could do. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see that we can come through with it and whatever. And I get that part of it, but it's just like I don't know how many companies in Knoxville can build a 10 story building. A lot. Yeah, Denark and yeah. yeah. I mean, there's plenty. Of, Hill. Th- there's there's plenty of capable locals that could do it it's just yeah. this one bought the property went through the process yeah um but yeah i mean I, like again again it goes to the housing thing too and it's just like it's like okay we're gonna build x number of houses or x number of housing units and all of them are gonna be filled by students yeah well fort sanders i mean fort sanders as a neighborhood used to be a very historic neighborhood and i mean ut just basically took it over and just demolished it i mean just just obliterated the whole but it got to i bet it got it's i i don't disagree but it said it got to one of those it's it's to me it's it was just an economics game yeah it's a i can rent this old ass house split it up into eight apartments right (laughs) or but we can take this little room here and make it seven apartments (laughs) right or build or build these complicated multi-tenant you know leases so that you can come and lease it for the nine months you're in school or whatever but you have to share parts of the house and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And we can we can do that, and that's going to maximize my ability to make money yeah. off of this house. Well, ge- it's ge- not worth fixing. Yeah, I mean, geographically, I think that some of like what you were saying, your frustrations with UT. I think I, I think some of it goes back to the geography of where UT historically has been. It's been Fort Sanders, and now I mean, right? It's stuck on. It's stuck in that little thick spot or that little dip in the river, mm-hmm. um, which is campus proper, and yeah. they don't have anywhere really to go. Um, you know, but now, I, and now they're eyeing, like the lieutenant governor with hearts in his eyes, <laughs> other properties around. Well, but because I think, and I, and actually, I'd be curious your take on this because I think one of the things that kept Fort Sanders what it is is the historic districting of it. Yeah, you know, and, and which also made it really hard on home on owners of property there, whether they were live in homeowners or mm-hmm. um, landlords, to do anything with those properties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they got kind of stuck, which also kept the university out because they're like, I'm not fucking with those historic district people. Yeah, they're kind they're, of they know what they're doing, and they, well, they, they take, know how to I make mean, this. they took those over too, like the James, um, uh, like one of the famous authors that was there. They took his house and bulldozed Ag, it. Ag, yeah, James mm-hmm. Ag. Um, I know, and they, it used to be uh, there used to be James Ag Way, and I think uh, I think they renamed it for Fulmer. <laughs> Did they really? I think, I think so. they're no. They're still James H. E. Way, but that would be a microcosm of, of the what you were talking about. Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, it's. I think it's just. I don't know. It's. It, I think there needs to be a larger philosophical discussion about UT and what the the scope of. I mean, it also comes back to what's the mission of a university? Is it to just grow, grow, grow? Is it to educate students? Is it to get rid of humanities? I mean, majors Sam gets mad at me all the time. It's, it's, majors? It is a profit rearing enterprise on some level. Yeah. What What do you think, Sam? What UT is? Well, like he said, you get mad at him for saying that. I I I, I push back on the the idea of education as a profit rearing entity. I mean, as as it I, should be, or as it is. As it should be. I guess. Okay. No, I agree with that. I mean, I don't. I don't disagree with Turn that either. Yeah. You're being all quiet, and if you're going to be quiet, I'm going to turn your mic up so I can hear you. Um, Speak. No, I agree that it, it shouldn't be, but do you think it has become that? I honestly don't don't know much about their their inner workings. Yeah, I mean, what to, like to say one way or the other? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't I mean, know where where they're putting all their what how many baskets they're putting their eggs. I mean, in. my wife and I have been talking about this recently. She's she has. She's worked in higher ed and is actually has degrees. Has she's finishing a doctorate in higher education policy? I think a lot of higher ed's a sham. I think it's kind of a sham. (laughs) 
I don't want to. Sp- I just don't want to speak first. I just, I just want to let somebody else. Because I mean, <laughs> I was about to. You, you'll agree with them. You're just paying for that piece of paper. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's like, and, and it's. And I don't think it's new. I don't think it's that it's become a sham. I think it's always been a sham. Yeah. I like my dad. You know, like my my. I actually, I'll take that back. But uh, or I'll you got clarify. Any red? You got any red? My dad is yes. Um, or another one of these. No, uh, that's the last of those. Oh, okay. Um, my dad is a Vietnam vet. Yeah. He went to college. Where'd he go? Uh, West Virginia. Oh, cool. He Morgan went to college yeah. because he was getting drafted. Mm-hmm. And if you go to college, you don't get drafted yeah. yet. And then if you do go to college and graduate, you go into, you get drafted as an officer. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you get to skip a bunch of shit, and you're less likely to get killed. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I've never actually point blank asked him, did you go to college just so that you wouldn't be a grunt and go get killed yeah or did you actually go to college because you wanted to go to college and it had the extra the extra bonus because he was like i mean he like he told me the story of like when he went to west virginia he was a he was the treasurer of his fraternity he talks about the parties they did all the time <laughs> all that kind of stuff but it also talks about he was rotc from day one okay yeah he's like i went to west virginia knowing that when i got out you were this, gonna go to if vietnam. this vietnam was still going on yeah. i'm going yeah like he's like i went knowing that i and i so i was in the rotc all the whole time I graduated, which automatically makes me an officer. I go through all the officer stuff that I already did with ROTC, and I'm like you know, so, so I, I jumped 15 steps yeah. from a regular kid get, that got drafted. Yeah. Um, but his his phrase to me the day I started at UT, he's like, "I don't care what you know, mm-hmm. it's about the piece of paper." Because huh. the only thing the piece of paper says is that you can learn. Mm-hmm. You can you can make it through. Yeah. Right. You can learn. That's all that matters is yeah. that piece of paper. Or you can navigate the system, right? Yeah. And so that's that 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 it actually kind of fucked me up because it took me off of like what I thought I wanted to do, which realistically wasn't wrong, it, into a more practical like I just need to get whatever. What was your major? My original major was music. I was going to be a music ed. Wow, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, all this dorky knowledge of the buttons and whistles and, oh, and makes, microphones makes sense now. Was okay. when yeah. I was into the music thing. Yeah. Um, but then uh, I shifted over to a business major, which also makes sense. Uh, and went from there. And so, like, I remember, like, he was he was taking classes, and I was like, just, like, what was the history class? Was that the one you were telling me about? You skipped your final? Huh? You, 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 one of the history classes you were taking, you skipped your final because you... Do you not remember the story? No. Okay. I remember you telling me that you... you were, it was the end of the semester, and I was like, well, how's it, how, how was school or whatever? And you're like, I skipped my final. I was like, what do you mean you skipped your final? I was like, yeah, I didn't really think I could learn that much in that class. So I didn't feel like I needed to take the final. And I took it is as it you. Sure, this is me. Yeah, I'm sure it was you. Wait, yeah, so no, where'd you go? High where, school? No, this is when you were taking classes at Mississippi or whatever. History final, and I, I didn't take the final because I didn't think I learned enough. Yeah, because you like you were passing the class, but you didn't think you learned enough, and so you you didn't feel like you should pass the class. That's, that was my take on it, at least. I purposely I failed the class because I, that was my take on it. <laughs> I used to drink a lot more back then. So I might have forgotten. Or maybe it was someone else. Anyway, so get to the point. It wasn't somebody Whether else. it was Sam or somebody else. Well, no, I guess I remember telling somebody the whole my whole dad's little speech. It's like, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you know. It just matters that you got the piece of paper to prove that you have the ability to figure out how to know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but but again, I, I think going back to the third grade retention and shit like that, I think, I think this is one of those questions, and I ask everybody, the school board people especially when I talk to them, it's like, what are we trying to do? What's the philosophy of education? Not what's the philosophy of education. What's the philosophy of the state of Tennessee's education system? I don't okay. care about what the grand philosophy and what some teacher who gets taught in, in university about what the philosophy of education yeah, yeah. is. I was what like, are we trying to do? What are we doing? Because yeah. it's one of the things that really frustrates me. Well, that's a philosophy of education. When we, but when we get into this partisan back and forth and bullshit mess, it's like, you know, the the the, the, le- the local left, at least, that I catch. Mm-hmm. Um, the, local, is, the local left? The, the local left. Am I part of the local left? Yes. Okay. It, who is so upset. Okay. About the charter school conversation. Oh yeah, it's about to happen. Yeah, we already have one that's coming here, and it's going to pass because this. Local... I'm getting advertisements on YouTube every day. I know. Yeah, I know. Um, and so that it, that is so upset about what the state of Tennessee is doing to our schools. Mm-hmm. Hates anything that the state of Tennessee is doing to take away from our schools. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it doesn't seem like the state of Tennessee constituency. Gives a shit enough to do any changes to this. So for me, the charter, like that's that's where the charter, and more importantly, the voucher conversation comes in. It's like, you know, this goes into the book thing that we're going to talk about here in a little bit too. It's like you hate what our state legislature is doing to our schools. Hate it. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I can't count the number of posts and conversations that go way <laughs> deep down the fucking rabbit hole <laughs> on how fucking bullshit our Are legislature is. Are you still in that is. group or they kick you out? Which one? Cornelio's? Cor- Cor- Brian's? No, no, no. Um, Speak? Yeah, Speak. I'm still in there. Oh, okay. They're not, they quieted down. They chilled out. They're oh, really? not nearly as active as they used to be. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's really just Jennifer and, and, and like two other people that okay. really post anymore. But like, it's like, well, this body who controls our schools, yep. no matter how you slice it, this body controls our schools. Which body? Which body? The state legislature. Okay, yeah. They yeah. control our schools. They yeah. control, like, t- really, when it gets down to it, the school board does next to nothing. <laughs> They at least in com- yeah. right, at least in comparison to what the state is doing, yeah. and you hate this body and what they're doing to schools. Mm-hmm. Yet you insist that this body is the one that should have the control over it. So you're so you're saying more local control. I would love more local control. Well, not with this legislature. I mean, what's the difference? No, oh, I get what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're making the. Um, but even but even if you put it in the local school board and the county control, it'd still be not. Too dissimilar to what's going on. Uh, Be a little better. No, I mean uh, mathematically, it's almost exactly the same, actually. Uh, yeah. But what's interesting when you think about that is, I was talking to someone else about this the other day. So Annabelle Henley, that ran South Knoxville, she lost by I think two hundred and some votes, two hundred thirty-seven, something like that. She would have basically flipped control of the school board. So two hundred thirty-seven people in South Knoxville basically decided what the future of Knox County schools are. No, they didn't. Why not? Because the state does it. That's my whole point of my, my, my rant was, is that the state legislature is the one that does it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the, yeah. I mean, the big macro stuff, but, like, how it's enacted on local level. Right. Like, what's the biggest, what's the biggest like, uh, they real... wouldn't approve that They wouldn't approve the charter that's coming through. That would yeah, they be different. Would. They don't have a choice. They the would state not approve legislature... it. The state legislature might override them. No, they they can't not approve it because this charter has nothing that the, that the local school board has the authority to say no to. No, no, now, but the, the, now, the local now, school board has to vote on every charter Sure, and our, and, and our girl cat might say no knowing that it's going to pass anyway. But if she says no knowing that other people are saying no and it doesn't pass, Knox County Schools is getting – or the school board is getting sued. By who? By whoever has applied for the charter. Well, I think that because state super, law I think overrides they can supersede it. supersede it and just go to no, the state. No, state law overrides it. That the, the, you're, you're correct that the school board can refuse a charter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if the charter checks the boxes that the state says correct then they sue and the them. school board denies it, mm-hmm. then that charter sues the school board. Yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, there's another number of other policy, local policy decisions that would be different. Right, we're getting, the, we're getting the playgrounds votes. fixed, and that's not bad. I'm not mad at Watson <laughs> for that one. I think that's a good – I mean, I think it's a weird That was Larson's thing, thing too, right? Yeah, Larson was in on that. I yeah. think that's a, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Hey, that, you got any red wine? Or oh, yeah, you asked yeah. me that a second ago. I do. I have, no, like, like bottles and bottles. down here? Bottles and bottles. Yeah there's, a, yeah, there's a whole box full of wine right there. Wow, okay. But it's not box wine. It's just a box full of wine. Okay. I, I don't like I, – I don't mind box wine. Um, I don't either. I, I, when I do buy anyway, wine okay, for myself, okay. We went down a rabbit hole. some champagne. Hole. Where did we go – Where okay, we were talking about school board, 237 votes. That's a white. Uh, that green top one, I believe, is a red. Uh, whatever is fine, yeah. What, what it's, it's kind of white? white. A hot white? What? It's sitting on the – Like a spicy? On the floor. No. <laughs> oh. It's just not cold. Social shard. It's a little cold. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, you got some of the screw top. It's easier. I've got a cork screw down here. You to, I don't want to make you up there. Yeah, but if you do that, then you're going to have to. Whatever. I'm, I'm not going to drink it otherwise, so. Right. Can I take it home with me? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Generous. Now it's a party, people. We got Matt on number three. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, you were asking a question. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out where we I are. I like the priorities here. He, he, dis- he disrupted not knowing where we were. <laughs> So that we could get some more wine in his glass. <laughs> Let's stop talking politics for a second. Where's the wine? <laughs> uh, all right, hold on. Let's. We gotta. We gotta backtrack. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Like we're going on. down a puzzle. Okay. We Sweet. were talking. Two hundred and thirty-seven votes. South Knoxville. That's going back to charter. That's going back to state legislature. That's going back to your discussion of educational philosophy. What are we? Okay. 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 Let's take it back to the macro level. Uh. What what are we trying to accomplish with our schools? Basically, is what you're saying, right? Right. Okay. Uh, what do you think we should be trying to accomplish? I don't know, but we're not doing good at whatever it is. Okay. But because actually, because if we're uh, let's continue down your backup, backup. Are we back trying to create workers no, or citizens? No, where we really okay. started yeah, yeah, was yeah. the sham of higher ed. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, um, so the new a- uh, eight six five academy thing that Rise Rick's that Ryswick and the school board have put out and is happening, which is something that is locally controlled per se. Um, 
you know, in, in the little video that they put out for it, he says that the the goal of this new eight six five academies is to make them to to if a, a, a Knox County student is going to graduate um, with the necessities to get to college, to get into the armed forces, or with base level knowledge of a particular vocation. Okay, that's what Which that's Mayor, what Kane's saying is. No, that's what Ryswick and the school board are saying. The eight six five academies. The new, okay, the, the say, new that, goal, say that again. Say that again. College, military, beginning level vocational. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, which again, I mean, which philosophically means that we are trying to create employees of some level mm-hmm. or prepar- preparations to be an employee. Yeah. Um, or military mm-hmm. or higher ed, which, which is still a, eventually, eventually an employee. Yeah. Which. Again, I don't know. Like I, I, I the, again, this goes back to my base issue with the, the the left in Tennessee and the issues with schools is, well, okay, let's build well-rounded people. Okay, sure, let's build well-rounded, civically engaged people. Citizens, yeah. Well, who gets to decide what a well-rounded, civically engaged person should look like? Oh, these set of assholes in in Nashville, <laughs> who are not likely to build a model that looks like one that you want. Yeah. So the idea of saying that public ed is the only way we can do it. And we have to be public. It has to be public schools. Charter schools are just stealing money from public schools. Private schools, vouchers are stealing money from public schools, which isn't untrue. I'm not disagreeing with that. Except for, at the end of the day, the public schools are going to teach what the state wants them to teach. And if we go to yeah. a mo- if we go to any model that is sort of any sort of civic mindedness, it's going to teach the rights version of civic mindedness in the state of Tennessee. Uh, you're yeah. not going to you you can't vote that you you can't I, I don't know how you can break that in the model that we're sitting in you have to wait until the legislature changes yeah. well, changes I mean, modes I, think, I mean in in the United States we have an interesting system of education in the sense that we don't I mean people like people on the right try they say oh the department of education blah 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 but I mean the department of education has very little control over curriculum curriculum is controlled on the state level agreed uh and so we basically have curriculum and there's no way to make curriculum in a non-biased way because everybody has their bias. Sure there is. What? Private everything. Private? What do you mean private everything? Take the state out of it. And make it what? Make, uh, any version of, of private schooling that you so, want to make it up. So that means everything is – everybody just has their own bias. Sure. So then you're just you, – At least you have multiple biases that get to <laughs> clash heads at some point and maybe come to a better conclusion or, than – Or than a one civil specific, war. One specific bias. <laughs> Um, it's not like we're not cruising down the path of the civil war already. I mean, like how far, off, like realistically, how far off are we at this point? It, uh, as, we can't, there is no way that we could fight a civil war. Like we fought a civil war before. If anything, we're in a cold civil war. Sure. I would say that's a good article. Somebody that's should write good, that yeah. cold a, civil war. It's certainly a good headline. Yeah. I'm just saying though, it's like, well, you know, again, if, if, if we're stuck with the model and this is the only model that makes sense at the end of the day, yeah. the, the the puppet master of this model is a group of people that everybody that demands that this model is the only way to do it doesn't like what they think or doesn't like how they think about it or what yeah. they're doing with it. Yeah, and it's just like that. It's 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 such a like I don't even know like I can't I I I get all flustered in what I'm doing currently trying to articulate it because it's it's so baffling to me because of how like narrow yeah. like like I get the idea of why public schools should be the answer. Mm-hmm. Like I get it in the broad sense. Yeah. But if public schools are always going to be controlled by a body, you're well, going I mean, to get stuck I, that, with what I, that body from, wants. From the perspective of someone on my side of the aisle, the the idea that we should have public schools that are not meant to be political indoctrination camps from, from any perspective, from any persuasion. Um, but I don't think anybody – like I think – I think the people that think that it is because it's the other or because I they, see, anything, they, they see the other. I don't the think other. that people on the left think that it's a political indoctrination. Okay. I think people on the right think it's a political indoctrination. So this is something we talked about the other day and that, that you can actually really help me with this because this is one of those where he questioned my statistics. Um, in just good old fashioned standard um, political engineering, for lack of a better word, okay. you have all, you have voting blocks, different – Demographics, yeah. Different demographics of people yeah. that generally vote in certain ways. Yeah. Now, at least in my understanding for the last 15, 20 years, college-educated 
voted what? What is that demographic generally voting? It has tended to be – It's tr- so it has trended Democratic. Okay. That was just – Trended. Pro- that was just a proven old point. But it, it – that's not across the board. There are certain – places where college-educated voters still vote Republican. Right. Uh, and there are certain places where non-college-educated voters vote Democratic heavily. Think about, like, union towns in the Midwest, like Cleveland, sure. yeah. Columbus, places like Pittsburgh. A lot of people right. in Pittsburgh do not go to college and also vote straight ticket blue because they're union people. Right. Yeah. Because they still think that the Democrats care about unions. Uh, because... Th- because, because the leader for, of the party goes and just destroys any union, because, like just kills a couple union members. Because the Democratic Party is the party of labor oh. and workers. Was is is is. So this is. whole the, the whole train union issue that that got squashed is 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 not the 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 train union issue is that is not not that, labor friendly. It's what the trains do is more important than the union of what the trains wanted. Uh, I'm not going to get into the. <laughs> I'm just throwing an example okay. out there. That's no. that's current right, events. Well, okay, I could maybe you could maybe make that point if the Republican Party even no even it's not, acted like they care about. It's not unions. no. Is it? I don't care what the other side's doing. I want to know what your side's doing. Um, your my side. Your is, side is not based on what the other side isn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good point. <laughs> uh, my side is promoting in, in states like. Okay, it's always national. Think about in states like Michigan, where they just got rid of uh, anti-labor legislation on the state legislative level. Well, it's because the first time in like thirty years, both yeah. houses and the uh, and the are governor controlled are by controlled by Democrats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, um, anyway, I, okay, okay. Back when you to- have shit like Flint, Michigan, how did you keep Republicans in place in the first place? Like, how do you, how do you, how do you? Continue, we didn't. That's why it flipped. Like, how do you continue down the road of this is the life that I live, and I'm going to keep voting for this guy? Yeah. What the fuck are you yeah, doing? I can't drink my water. My water starts on fire. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to vote for the guy I voted for last time because he's a good dude. Uh, anyway, so philosophy of education. I haven't like sat down and thought about it, but I, I, I would. I always feel uncomfortable in the with the idea that education is just to create labor. I. And create like employees. I think that's a. I think that's a really flawed view of of what education is. I'm just, not saying to say. I'm not. But that's not to say I don't think that it should be detached at all from employability and things like that. But I, I don't think, disagree with you, except for I find it amazing that in the system that you went through, that I went through. that is based on. Yeah, it doesn't matter what state you're in. The United the, the totality North of Carolina. Your, the totality of the United States education system is built on the Austrian model. What's the Austrian model? The Austrian the Austrian model was was there was there was uh, two factors is they needed uh, it, 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 which is what creeps me out about the Rysweek thing they needed factory workers and they needed soldiers yeah right and so the problem they kept having was when they were drafting these soldiers they didn't give a shit so they ran away mm-hmm. you know and so they so a big huge chunk of the Austrian model was nationalism patriotism right and yeah, yeah. Um, and then part two is you put a bell system in place you put a structure you put all these different parts and pieces of things in place so that you are smart enough to operate the machines but not smart enough is that where bells to question come whether, from yeah the, wow. the bell the, the bell at school is based on is is, is based factory on the factory bell, bell. Yes. wow i did not know that yeah interesting and that's that that is what the u.s model where did you is read this? Just, why do okay. you guys ask me questions like that i don't remember shit <laughs> I only remember the though. cool parts. Where'd you get your facts from? Yeah, that is interesting, though. And so, so and so, the, 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 I made the, jo- the, 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 the the whole story was the joke of, I, I I don't disagree with you as I've aged and gotten more enlightened, I suppose, about what education is or shouldn't be or whatever. But that is the model we all grew up with. Yeah, that is what we were that we were. Tra- it was trained to follow orders, trained to move when you're told to move, trained to sit when you're told to sit, all those kind of things. That that is a huge chunk of the system. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. I get it, 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 but it's a weird it's a weird issue because I think one of the things that I don't quite know how to grapple with is like to me like when I base when when I start breaking stuff down when I'm looking at you know like this drag bill for example being like one of the things that's a big fucking issue and blah 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 yeah. and and it's like well like Zachary for example you run on economics mm-hmm. you run on economics and hate and Zachary yeah you run oh, on, he runs on culture wars or, nonstop. But he's, somewhere in that, he's talking about you know trying to bring better business into Tennessee, kind of bullshit, whatever. Nah, that that, that those talking about wars more. Absolutely, because that's the one he actually does anything about. Not realizing that every every step he's taking in that direction is damaging the other side. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because well, that's the thing is eventually how far are you going to go until businesses say like, hell no, I'm not coming to your state. Right. I got gay employees. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's like you, you, it's either, it's a either, I, yeah, I'd totally move my business in there, but the employee base who is college educated, mm-hmm. you know, college educated people who tend to lean left or at least are at minimum are agnostic yeah. on these issues. But probably have friends that are gay, friends that are or trans. Or women and who don't want to die if they have right. a bad practice. You know, so all these other issues, all the staffing that I could have won't come yeah. here because of the other things you're doing. Um, I lost my train of thought. Shit. Um, Zachary. Uh, education model. Fuck. People that come here, one thing weighs on the other. Nah, I don't know. Okay. Lost it. What do, Sam, thing. what do you think? What's what do you think the goal of education should be? Public education, high school, stuff like that. Is further, it create, create further, good further citizens? betterment of the populace. Yeah. Okay, so so create good citizens. The, so what about employability? It lends to it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. No, and that makes sense. Yeah. That it's both. I mean, you're saying it's both. It lends to it. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of brought that, that, that help. Thank you. That helped me get back to where it was. Is that. Is that when I go into when I go into breaking down watching these bills and stuff, I I, I can't help but think about it in economics. That's just the way my yeah. brain works. You know, I, I I like to think of the government as a just a different business, and you just change out, you know, sales for growth or whatever other model yeah. you want to kind of put in its place, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> you know, and so it's like, and so I get the education model as it stands for that point. We want people that go to work because what do people that working do? They pay taxes. Yeah. And so if my goal is to raise revenue for the state of Tennessee, I want jobs. Mm-hmm. And the higher paying the jobs, the more revenue I get. And those are the targets. And so the education I want to make is to get people high paying jobs that keep voting for me. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. So, you know, what? what's like that? And, and that is the model. Like that is the mind. To me, that is the mindset of what the education model is built around. Yeah. These are the things. This is all that matters. We want to keep being the cheapest tax state in the fucking union and all that kind of bullshit that we that they like that, to brag that about. That is relied on federal subsidy, subsidy. Whatever. We're going to keep doing that thing. Well, it doesn't matter. We have the high paying whatever, and they're paying plenty of federal taxes yeah. too. I think it's really funny though that they like so like the big <laughs> Ford plant that they brought into West Tennessee. Ford is a decidedly pro union company, um, but then they're like they invite Ford in, but they're like, oh, but we got to stop those unions. It was a VW thing in Chattanooga, too. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, when the VW vote came out, I mean, ev- all every single Republican, Bob Corker, Lamar Alexander, Bill Haslam, went to the mat to stop that. So they want the auto industry, but they don't want unions. Which uh, and, and what's interesting, though, is that like a lot of the big auto companies are not anti-union. GM and Ford, I mean, they're pretty. They're like, oh, that's fine, yeah. It's good because they're used to it. Doesn't mean they're good with it. I know at this point there's no way getting around it. Yeah. In Michigan, at least. (laughs) Not anymore, at least. In Chattanooga. In Chattanooga, they got rid of it. So, all right, I got to take a little break. Tinkle break. All right. Matt's still peeing. He's taking too long. Um, Shift conversation a little bit. What you got? So I, I sent Matt some. I, I feel bad. I should have done it. I should have sent. I should have forwarded these articles to you. Okay. Um, actually, what did we talk about in the group chat this week? Because I know we had a couple things that floated around. The McNally mess. That was it. Oh yeah, that one. Well, that's a bullshit one. The Volkswagen Union vote. That's when politics yeah. used to be. Yeah. That's how I roll. I bring it back. Anyway, we, I, I turned it back on because you were being weird about it. <laughs> so we heard you flush. Okay. Um, Okay, yeah, so I forgot about the VW thing. So That's when they went rolling back into some state legislature thing. I want to clarify a point because I think it's bullshit and yeah. it's it's terrible. There's a, there are a couple of different uh, organizations have put some articles out. This is truthout.org. dot uh, org. Tennessee GOP led House talking about trying to legitimately kill gay marriage. Oh yeah, right? this is a misleading headline. Oh, yeah. it's and the the whole I I've read a couple of different articles on it and it's. It's stupid. It's a stupid bill, and and the it fact make that sense. the fact that I spent 15 minutes watching a subcommittee meeting that anybody was talking about. Oh my gosh, really? Was a mistake <laughs> on my part and theirs because I can't remember who in the meeting who in the meeting said it, and it was a Republican in the when meeting. When you watch those, do you wonder who in the world in their right mind would want to be in the state legislature? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, what's funny to me about it is one of the Republicans is in the rooms goes, 
Is there anything in the books that says that you can't? All right, sorry. Context for the the the, <laughs> the listeners is uh, I can't remember the name of the bill right now. Um, the Tennessee House passes bill letting clerks refuse marriage license to LGBTQ couples. Wrong. That's the headline. Right. Yeah. This is the headline from truthout.org. Um, Never heard of them. Yeah. So anyway, the, the, the bill is actually, it is guaranteeing the right to refuse the solemnization. That's not the right, that, that's the base right word, but I don't think solemnization. The, the, you can refuse to solemnize a marriage based on whatever reason you want. Which is officiate. Right. Yeah, officiate So the, a the officiant can yeah. say, you know what? I'm not into your gayness. I'm not doing this process. Yeah. Which is already perfectly legal in the state of Tennessee. Yeah, so like a minister or a rabbi or whatever. Right. Anybody. Yeah. If you've got the if you've got the, the license to yeah. do a marriage, you can Which refuse I do. a marriage. I do. Right. I've, I've done um five marriages and they're still all married, so I'm betting a thousand. So the only thing to me that has any sort of like real like anti LGBT um, questionability to it is could in it just bill. can a justice of the peace then not? So if you're in like a small county that only has two judges, oh, and the judge says, oh, and the judge says, I'm, a, I refuse, I refuse to solemnize this. That's the only thing to me that gives it any validity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it yeah. does. But no, like as long as a, a Burgerfeld or whatever is still stands, yeah. There is no clerk in the state of Tennessee that can refuse to issue the license. Yeah, they just have to. They basically just have to stamp it. Right. Which which begs the question: Is do you need an officiant? Can you just fill out the paperwork and be done with it? Do you have to do a ceremony? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you've done them. Uh, you have like, to, you it, it is shit. odd. It is odd, yeah, that you have to fi- fill out this legal piece of paper. Um, I mean, in certain other countries, you have like religious marriage and legal marriage, which are different. Yeah. Anyway, like that—that that was a, that that popped up this week as like a, a thing that people were talking about, and like, yeah, I, I, mean, I took the time to look into it, and it's like this outrage, is trash. Really, yeah. yeah. There's enough real. <laughs> there's enough space for real outrage here. Yeah. You don't need to. And then also, wait, wait, what did the guy in the in the subcommittee say? Which one? The guy that introduced it, or the no? They, he said, "Like, is there?" All- yeah, he was just like, "There's, is there anything?" Like he was like, so the whoever, like I think it's farmer, uh, rep farmer or something Great like that. Farmer. Yeah, who had introduced the bill? Um, you know, or he was, Andrew Farmer. He's yeah, better than that. My gosh, he was. I, I'd have to look it up again. I, I don't. Uh, anyway, whoever it was that introduced the bill was in the subcommittee, and he was introducing it to the subcommittee and taking questions from the subcommittee, and that was one of the questions. Was like, is there anything in the code that says that they have to? And and he's like, no, not to my knowledge. He's like, then why do we need this? Yeah, it's a waste of time. Yeah. And he's like, well, I just want to make sure, you know. And he like he made it some, <laughs> he made it like his, and his argument was on like um, elder abuse, where what? it was it was about like you know, there's a lot of young people that are taking advantage of old people by marrying them so they can take their money. And it's like, well, what is an efficient going to do about that? Like, you know, and and again, and to me, it's a big question of like whose job is it to protect that elder and all that kind of stuff. You know, because it's certainly not the clerk's job yeah. to sit there and go, well, this guy's old with a lot of money and you're young. This doesn't make any sense. I'm not going to sign this marriage license. No, yeah. that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. And so, like, the, the, the premise is trying to be like, well, if you if if we if we make sure this is here, there's, like, you know, some nice priest can make sure that some old man doesn't get taken advantage of by a kid. <laughs> like, that was the pitch. Yeah. And it's like, nah, come Gay on, Gay or not. Right, yeah. it, right, and I think that. If but it's that's, Randy McNally, or if it's right, anybody. that's the that was the cover. Like to me, if it was the obvious cover story because it's still like I mean I think it is. It's kind of poking at the at a, at, a, at the gay marriage issue, but like the cover story instead of being kids, yeah, yeah, is it's old people, yeah, because they're whatever. So um, the other topic that I sent uh, that I prepped Matt on that I didn't prep Sam on, so I apologize, Sam, um, is. Um, to the, the the question that I have, that the the I guess the way to start this conversation, the question that I have is: Is it worse to ban books or to edit them? All right. Good question. So I I did a little thinking before I came here because uh, you sent me an article about the banning books, and then you said, "Oh, I need to get closer." No, uh, I sent. Well, I, no, the two articles I sent you were both on edits. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would I would consider myself personally, philosophically, pretty strongly um, anti-censorship, um, full, fully First Amendment rights. Uh, I, I think that when you have these kind of discussions, too, is there something change with the sound? Can I don't you think so. Me? You got closer to the mic. Can you hear me? Okay. You're emptier. Um, I think there needs to be, when you talk about First Amendment, freedom of speech, things like that, you need to, th- 
what what a private company does is totally different than what a government does. Sure. Um, and like private companies, they can do whatever they want to do. I mean, it's a matter. Um, you don't believe that, but okay. <laughs> uh, to an extent, I mean, they can't <laughs> say like, "Yeah, we're not going to serve black people here." You can't do that. Okay. Um, I'm not going to start that argument, but okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, versus what the government does, um, but. I think that I, I'm almost a First Amendment absolutist or free speech absolutist. You know, just let just let them do say what they want to do. It's public is the public uh, marketplace of ideas. If it's bad, it'll get pushed down. If it's good, right. it'll be pushed up. Uh, to an extent, I mean, I don't think that you should just let people promote child pornography everywhere and say, "Oh, well, I mean, that's well, illegal." Uh, yeah. So that's fine. Um, but anyway, so like the 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 editing stuff, I th- I read the the article about the the doll book and Willy Wonka. I think a lot of that's silly. I think that's just kind of stupid. Um, if a if a private company that publishes those books wants to do that, whatever. I personally think it's stupid that they would do that. Right, and I and, and in the doll story specifically, I think it's important to 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 recognize the part that the the estate approved it. Yeah. The R.L. Stein one's a little different, and we'll go into that in a second. Uh, is uh, that the is that the Goosebumps guy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Goosebumps um, one. Yeah. And well, that gets back. Who owns the rights to that? Him or or the or the publishing I company? I don't okay. Because to me, it's like like, like, like uh, I, that. Also, I think it's stupid. I think it's silly. I've been thinking about because I've been thinking about it prior to and post uh, sharing this this topic idea or whatever you want. But it's like because to me, it's like you know, it's like okay, so that if you want to edit a book. To take out some things that might be offensive, yeah. you know, the Arl Stein was like fat, crazy, like calling people fat or crazy inside yeah. the book or whatever that was edited out against his will. Which I do have issues with that part of it because yeah. you are the artist. Yeah. I don't care who owns it; you're the artist. Yeah. This is the art that I created. Yeah. But um, if you want to edit it out, that's fine. But I think it deserves at least a note that yeah, like, true. if we're going to do it, let's true. do it. Let's do it. Let's do it Tipper Gore style. Yeah, and put the fucking label on it. <laughs> You like that? You like how I worked that around? <laughs> there you go, Al Gore. Like what I did there? Sixty percent in yeah. nineteen eighty four. Let's uh, let's let's do a Tipper Gore style, yeah. and let's put the parental advisory label on it. Yeah, and say they say fat in this book, right? Yeah. Or let's say this is an edited copy for sensitivity or whatever the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, phrasing yeah, yeah. we no, want to no, do. No, no, that's good. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I even with the doll version of it with the with the approval, I think that is that is rewriting history to me. Yeah, and I, I agree. I would and agree so, to that. and yeah. so, to go back to the other version of the band book version of it is one: the state of Florida, or the state of Tennessee, for that matter, is not banning books. They're banning books in schools and classrooms. Wait, 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 wait! What? Right? They're ban- So say that again. So, like, Florida is like like the state is in a bunch of heat because they're banning books from certain from 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 curricula. Yeah. In the classroom or something. Yeah. And so, just like you qualified, the private public thing or whatever what a private company does whatever yeah is and so what the public does what the what the, what the public entity of the government does mm-hmm. is within the realm of the public entity yeah i can acknowledge that as an as, as maybe not a good but as an okay yeah they're not banning the books from existence but they're still banning the books no they're, they're no they're not you they can are, still go to the bookstore and buy the book the but, book doesn't cease to exist but they're it banning cease to be it from the library from the school library. Yeah. From the public library. That's still a book ban. No, it's not. What is it then? It's a it's a it's it's a it's a ban from public access. It's a book ban from public libraries. Sure. Okay. But they're getting removed from public libraries as I well. I don't know if it's public I, libraries, yeah, but at least from the school libraries schools. and the classrooms. It doesn't really matter either. And, and but I even think it's if, just an evaluation process. Even if you take it to the libra- to the public library thing, it's the same thing. It's like so in the in, in in what I can't help myself but do when I do it is like I think about it as a business. Okay. Does uh, the state of- from the public and and a school in the library is totally different. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, what ahead. the state does with their property right? So we elect these people to make these decisions. Yeah, 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 yeah. What the state does with state property is the discretion of the state as long as it's within the constitution yeah, of the state, the state and the federal the, government. But the, the constitution of the federal government is, is First the, Amendment. The, the constitution of the federal government doesn't demand that every state have every book accessible to the public in their libraries or schools. It, it, it limits. It gives them it, the. It's, it says that you can't limit free speech. Sure. And you're. Oh, wow. Sure. Yes. Then, by definition, the school boards and the state of Tennessee Department of Education limits free speech. If that's the definition you want to go with, yeah. With regardless of this banning thing, they pick books that they're allowed to use in schools. 
they're limiting free speech by not letting other books cover that curriculum. It doesn't matter whether they're the mouse or whatever the yeah, fuck book that's yeah, getting banned. Yeah, but I mean, it's yes, but also if there are books there and then they're getting rid of the books. But they always do. They do that all the time. They cycle through series of books. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. The but time. You, you get rid of a book because no no kid ever checks it out. Okay. And then you get rid of a book because oh, it has a gay character in it. Okay. So you retire a book for whatever reason. You retire a book. That's a ban. <laughs> that's a that's the ban. I, again, I'm not saying there's not nefarious uh, intent from the yeah, people yeah. that are playing this game. Okay. I'm just saying that it, like if we're the, if the definition is that if the public library has the book, they have to keep the book forever. No. Well, but if they take it out, it's a ban. If they take it out for certain reasons, they don't want people to read it. If they take it out because it's a book on the architecture of Morristown, Tennessee, and it has, it's been there for 40 years, nobody's ever checked it out, okay. they take it out. And then I go the next day and ask for a book on the architecture of Morristown, Tennessee, and they say, well, we got rid of that. Well, then why did you ban that book? That's not a book ban. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely. That's, they got rid of a book because nobody checked it out. The, 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 the st- All right, okay, if you own a bar and you have you have a drink, you have a beer that nobody ever drinks, and you're like, screw this, I'm not going to buy this beer anymore. But then you have a beer that people Speaking of, can you grab one? that people do drink, please, please, please. but then you're like, I don't want people to drink this beer. I'm going to get rid of this beer. I, that's I, very different. No, I, that's a, it's a beautiful example, wonderful example. <laughs> All right, so I don't like Yeehaw. Yeah. I have a problem with Yeehaw. You know what my problem is with Yeehaw? What? They're not a fucking Knoxville brewery, and I'm so goddamn tired of Knox News drooling, drooling over Yeehaw. They're so fucking special. They, they're so excited. They're fucking it. here, yeah, licking the balls all fucking day long. I'm so <laughs> tired of hearing about That's that Yeehaw. Ryan Wills' guy or whatever. All right, whatever. so <laughs> to, clarify, to clarify this sub-portion of my example, yeah. all right, so New Belgium. Where's New Belgium from? I don't know. Did you answer his example? Where's New Belgium from? It's not from Asheville, but they brew in Asheville. I don't know. Would you call it a North Carolina brewery? No, it's a fucking Colorado brewery like it's always been. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, <laughs> going back to the, <laughs> the beer example, is it's my bar. Yeah. I'll put whatever fucking beer I want in it. Mm-hmm. Well, the state of Tennessee, this is my library. I'll put whatever the fuck I want in it. Yeah, but the bar a bar is different than the freaking state government. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. It's not. Legally, we, it is. We elect these people to make these decisions. If you don't like who we elect, fix it. You they can't have, they because have we can't. They have to abide by. By what? Whether it's, whether it's illegal or not, it's still they're banning the book because they don't want people to read it. Again, if that, that assertion may be true, yeah. but that doesn't make it against the policy that the state could put in place. They're not. Ex- they're not. They're Does it make it so book- I can't call it a book ban? A book ban, by definition, is it's not allowed to be read. We're going to take the book off the shelves. A Barnes book ban Noble- is saying we don't want people to read this book. We're going to get rid of it. Sure, but you but only if you can get rid of it. Period. And you can't get rid of it, period, because you can still order it on Amazon. You can still go to the comic book shop, and they'll give you it for free because they're so pissed off about it. They gave like 500 copies of that mouse book out oh, yeah, when yeah, they yeah, took yeah. it off, when they banned it from Knox County Schools. Yeah. Okay, the government is not a business. But, okay. I mean, technically, anyway, sure. Okay, okay, go back. But the people that... Okay, but I'm talking about the intent. All right, you take... You you got you have a bar. People come in. Oh, my gosh. Give me a yeehaw. Give me a yeehaw. You're selling yeehaws out the wazoo. Out the yazoo. And... Yazoo is a different brewery. That's not a good yeah. example. And you say, "Screw these guys! I don't want people to drink of this anymore." Uh-huh. You get rid of it. There's a different intent there than I got. I don't know what's a beer people don't drink. That's a, that's a terrible question to ask. We don't know kinda, because people don't drink it. Yeah, because people. But you got you know. got uh, Billy Bob's beer. He brews up in Claiborne County. It's been on the menu for speaking of Billy Bob's beer anyway. for three years, and nobody's ever even ordered. You got a you got a bunch of it in the back. You're and you're saying screw this. I'm not going to order anymore. It's Billy not because it's it's the discre- that's a different intent. It's the discretion of the person. Yeah, I agree. It's a different intent, but it's the discretion of the person who operates that. The facility. government has different discretion than businesses. I don't know. I I I I get. I, I I whether whether it's legally wrong or not in a court of law is, in my opinion, different than whether it it's it it should be or shouldn't be what they were doing. And also, I mean, what's funny is that some of these books that they want to ban too, they are books that kids never check out, 
it never read, and then all of a sudden they ban it, then the kids are going to want to read it. Oh, are we talking about a conspiracy? Is there something going on here? Like, is this intentional? No, are I'm just trying saying, like, to get the popularity of these they books don't, up? Like, you got these books that... Like, is it a publisher like that's mouse, buying off by a banning, By banning Mouse, that made more people read it. Right. It's a genius move. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a shitty book, <laughs> and I'm going to get Lafferty... Or Zachary it. to ban it for me, and then I'm going to sell a fucking million of them. Genius! Yeah. There you go. I'm sure that's, the, the guy who wrote Mouse... It's not an uncommon practice. Yeah, I'm sure it's the guy brilliant. who wrote Mouse made a good penny off the thing. Oh, it happened a bunch in, of in the 90s. And, I don't know if the comic book stores or whatever. A lot of books, and, you know, when the, what's their whole explicit you know labels that came out. Oh, yeah. Sure, when most Chipper teenagers like, saw stuff, they're like, ooh, like, I want to see you. I'm like, why is it, you know, I had ex- the t-shirt. Explicit. Did you have the t-shirt? I bought that no, T-shirt. I didn't buy that stupid What's fucking the t-shirt? T-shirt. It's just the fucking explicit, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's accurate for me, so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I have the, It's all it's all culture war. It's the, it's not designed to get people not to read the book. It's designed to score political points. I love the parents that are coming back at the school boards and be like, "Okay, well, we want to have an amendment to ban the Bible." Like, <laughs> have you read what's in there? There's some crazy I mean, stuff like, in there. This does not need to be accessible to our children. Yeah. Or is that, I, I'll have to check next time I go to my kids' library. I'll check it out. And see if, if they have a Bible in there. Yeah, I mean, there's I rape. And there's there's I've got like 12 in this house, and I don't know when any of them are. They're, they're around. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you're right. I, I mean, think. the Bible, the stuff Here's in the Bible. Here's a book that, that okays genocide, but hey. The stuff in the Bible is worse this. than what's in mouse. I mean, Leviticus is the most hardcore. And I, I have a degree in biblical read. studies. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like we, I make the joke. Like, like, if you want to read some hardcore shit, read Leviticus. It's fucking hardcore. Some serious shit going on there. It's not really good storytelling, though. It's really judges. Judges is better. It's like a, it's a good story, and it's also like, oh my gosh, they just killed a thousand people. <laughs> like the Viticus is more just like, yeah, it's this like is bad. This is bad. Yeah, yeah, do this, no. do Read bad. judges. Judges is good. All right. yeah. I'll have to find one of my. Problems. And judges has got it's got prostitutes. It's got it's got all the it's got the greatest hits. <laughs> I just I, again Wholesome for the whole family. Yeah. I, to, to go back to the the, the original question is. We're not banning books. We're not truly banning books. I, I acknowledge what you're what you're what you're leaning towards in it. But if I want to read Mouse, I can go get Mouse. If I want my kids to read Mouse because I think it's a good book for them to read, they're to help trying them to make it, the They're thing. trying to make it harder. Sure, but yeah, again, but, but 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 you're talking about oh, they can go get it from the public library. I mean, I didn't say that. Yeah, but if they can't get it from the school library, go to the public library. I mean, it's just like. I mean, it's adding layers because they don't want people to read the book for a specific reason. Again, uh, and, sure. and again, I'm not disagreeing I think, with that I think part that, of it, but it's the, uh, to go back to what you were saying earlier. I think it's all designed as a distraction. This is not a real issue. I, I, I 100% agree with that. But from what? What are we distracted from? What are we not seeing because we're seeing this? Uh, that that Ron DeSantis wants to cut Social Security, and Medicare. That Ron DeSantis wants to, uh, I mean, anything else that Ron I mean, DeSantis you, wants to do. Are you, really, it's, it's, are you really worried about Ron DeSantis? It's this, are you really thinking he's going to win that primary? No, he doesn't have the secret sauce. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> he, he goes into the national stage one time. Donald Trump calls him Meatball Ron. Mm. And then he alludes to He absolutely does not call Meatball and, Ron Meatball Ron. No, no. Why would I call him Meatball Ron? I didn't say Meatball he, Ron. I would never call him Meatball Ron. The Sanctimonious is pretty Ron? fucking good, too. So, I mean, that one's already, that one's already played. Uh, what was that no, one? there's no way. If Ron I were, Sanctimonious? If I were, <laughs> if I were advising Ron DeSantis, he should not ruin the primary because Donald Trump will just obliterate him. I don't say, uh, I, like, I mean, if, if. Nikki Haley, too. I don't know what she thinks she's doing. If, if the RNC could get their shit together and shut it everybody down and it's just Santos. there's a chance it's a slim chance but there's a chance yeah, there's no way that he beats trump though i think if it was a true head-to-head it's close Sorry, it's that's... not a blowout but if it's DeSantis, haley pence pompeo yeah blah, blah, i think blah, donald blah, trump blah. would just say like um did you see those white boots he wore it would be over we're like how stupid is this guy huh and the people go crazy They're like yeah well, if- he is stupid well, and if DeSantis would actually separate himself in any way, and honestly, like Trump is killing it right now in the political rhetoric He's game. He's smart. He's smart. He is murdering right now in the political game. Ukraine war sucks. Cutting Social Security, Medicare sucks. You're all done. There's yeah. nothing because nobody – also. What's funny to me too is that Donald Trump has said like, hey, no, we shouldn't cut Social Security and Medicare – even though the Republicans want to do that. And then he's like, hey, you know, we shouldn't try and limit abortion. Like, we should just let that be. And the Republicans are like... It's like, like, it's almost like Donald Trump is is not saying what Republican Party wants him to say. 
And then all the primary voters are like, oh, yeah, Trump. Yeah, that's right. Right, but the party won't move. Yeah. It's weird. Like, it's, like Trump has been a great experiment. Yeah. For yes. lack of a better word. Sociological experiment. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> but I saw something that I didn't realize was a thing. And you might you might know, Matt, if it's a, a statewide thing. I'm assuming they were saying it was maybe more of a national thing. It was based on like a no sort. They call it like a quote unquote no sort, no sore loser law. Oh, where it you can't run as a yeah, if you if you lose in the primary, you can't then try I to like go that. third third I think party. It's appropriate. Do we have that in the state? I, I think I they think were referencing to Nashville as far as Trump might do that if he lost the primary. Then yeah. he may try to come in as a third party. Yeah, I think there it's state to state, and is it? I think. Okay. But I think what I read is that there's not enough states where you could actually win. Like you could run, but there's no way that you You're could actually win. You're not going to hit the electoral college. Yeah, game. yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I mean, if Donald Trump lost the primary, I just cannot see him endorsing whoever beats him. Sure. I just can't see that. I mean, I think like, like, yeah. Um, like one of my running jokes currently is I am probably one of very, very few people Mm -hmm. who want the Trump Biden rematch. Really? Yeah. Okay. Give me the, why do you want that? Because hopefully the clarification of how much of a shit show this is pulls like a 12 percenter for some third party candidate. That's going to wake everybody up. And then maybe the parties will start going, well, I think we're going a little too far. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to go moderate a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we might actually get some decent candidates next rotation. Yeah. Do do you seriously want this? I don't mean, I mean, are you advocating like just <laughs> as opposed stu- to what stupidity chaos as opposed to what we get Biden because Biden's going to run again yeah. versus who it won't be Nikki Haley. Who's going to bring it back to some sort of semblance of fucking decent reality? Uh, maybe Mike Pence, but he's pretty far right on abortion. <laughs> well, pretty far. <laughs> I don't know if I can figure out how far right that could be. He wants to take what Tennessee has done and triple it yeah. nationally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think both parties have a bench of, like, people who could run. Okay, tell, like me, tell me about your party's bench. Uh, you got you got uh, Secretary Mayor Pete. Because uh, he's been kicking ass and taking names in, in transportation. <laughs> it's been a great, great you couple got, of years for the transportation uh, industry. Cory Booker. You got um, no, Kamala's not the first on the list. Shouldn't she be Kamala, automatically? You got Kamala because she got, kicked ass in the primaries. Uh, Andy Bashir, the governor of, of Kentucky, I think he'd be a great candidate nationally. Okay. I don't know that one, so I'll uh, give you that. Roy Cooper, governor of North Carolina. I um, think Tom Tillis could do well. I think that's his name. So the, the problem so far is in, that in North Carolina, the two names that you said that I don't have no, objections uh, to, I haven't heard. Yeah, Roy Cooper, Andy, Andy. He's the Bashirs. Mon- Think of the Montana yeah, governor. Sure. Yeah, that's uh, in a heavily Republican state that has been the the Democratic governor. Oh, for, Steve Bullock. Yeah, Steve Bullock. Yeah, he's not the governor it. anymore, but he was he was governor. Um, I'm yeah, saying, I, mean, I think, that, I think that, just for the sake of conversation, I think Raphael Warnock down in Georgia. I think he'd be a good candidate. Senator. Right. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Right. Mark Kelly, senator from Arizona. He's an astronaut. Voters love astronauts, yeah. and we like him here in Tennessee. Uh, do we? Yeah. Why? They're both UT students. Twin brother, yeah. yeah. Oh, they both went to UT? Yeah. What? I believe that's the story. Really? They, there is a, Either one or both. There yeah. is some very strong local connection on the, the – To Mark Kelly. The Kelly family. Yeah. Wow. So they made a big point of it whenever he was doing like the longest space walk or longest really? stint in space. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, part, they actually did a twin – Yeah, yeah part of the whole actually. experiment was the twin thing is that yeah, yeah. we want to see what happens to what is essentially an identical – copy of, huh. of a thing. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know over that. over that series of time. Yeah, he'd be a good one. Uh Gavin Newsom, Governor of California. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although California, I don't think anybody <laughs> from California can run nationally. Uh Tim Kaine in Virginia. I mean I think there's a, there's a number of people. I mean the only list the, Nobody the, knew who Barack Obama was in two thousand six. The 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 it's true. fair enough. I mean just the, okay. And any of them are gonna play the primary game against the incumbent? Oh, no, no. Nobody will run against Joe Biden, except for, what's her name, Marianne Wilson, the crystal lady. She's like, I got these crystals that'll heal you. <laughs> I was about to say, I, was like, I heard she ran. Or she's already announced. Yeah, she's a weirdo. Yeah, I mean, it's all she's already announced. Although, I don't know if I can... I'm not supposed to take sides in primaries. Of the prominent of the prominent <laughs> candidates at play in both parties, <laughs> yeah. I'm not impressed. Uh, I'm not impressed in the sense that we're going to get anything I remotely, that- remotely uh, approaching anything back to rational... 
Uh, because, I mean, realistically, you don't when's think the last Joe Biden's time, rational? When's the last time we had a rational government? You don't think that Joe Biden's rational? Uh, it, no. Okay, whatever. Um, I think he's very rational. Uh, but anyway, if Donald so, Trump is the if Donald Trump wins the Republican primary, I think they'll get obliterated. It doesn't matter who the Democrat is, and and I hopefully think, they'll learn. I think you were incredibly wrong. I think that I think if you have learn. a Trump Biden rematch, it's going to be at worst an exact replica of what just happened, where Joe Biden wins barely. Yeah. Um, at worst, I think that he. I think that Trump would. I think Trump would lose. I just think that Trump would lose. I don't. Mm, I don't know. It depends. I mean, there, there's plenty of economical shit that can change between then and now that I might agree yeah. with you with. But as the as the economy, I just think people are a little tired of Trump. I mean, I think people are a little tired of Joe Biden too. But I think they're more tired of Trump. They're just like, go away, just go away. Suburban voters, I think suburban voters are like that. Just like, just go away. Hey, Maybe seems, they would vote for DeSantis. It seems like more of the, the GOP has turned against Trump than the Democrats have. Uh, turned, while while the turned, turned against. Uh, I'll agree with you on the establishment portion of it, like uh, uh, Murdoch or whatever from. Fox News is not a big Murdoch. fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Murda. Rupert. No, that's Murda. That's a murder guy. He's a Democrat. Oh, yeah. He's actually a Democrat. Fucking, that's a. I don't understand why that's a fucking story. I was so pissed off. They interrupted Jeopardy to show the fucking verdict. <laughs> why do I give a shit? He's a Democrat, you know. Good for who? I just don't like. I don't see any change. Is my problem from any of the list of, of any of the list of people that you listed that I actually know who they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see any potential change either side of the either side I of the. I think aisle. that yeah, but I think that a lot of the politics now have been dominated by where the Republican Party is. I think that if you want moderation in politics, it's going to have to start with the Republican Party. Okay, so so much of what my party has to do is we have to react to what the freak they do. So the 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 rational Biden thing that you just said a second ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, help me understand. Sam's going to hate me for this. Um, help me understand the rationale of what's going on in Ukraine right now and why it's our financial responsibility. Uh, it is not just our financial responsibility. Uh, I would say that what you have in Ukraine... This goes, uh, this goes in the same line of the banned book conversation we just had. 99.5% of it is our responsibility. I don't know what you're trying to say. Uh, in Ukraine, we we... If we want to make sure that Russia's aggression does not continue into places like Moldova, into places like uh, Western or Eastern Europe, Western Europe, other places, then this is this is the perfect opportunity for us, not as the United States, but as as the West, as Canada, as United Kingdom, as Australia, as Eastern or as Western Europe, France, uh, all so, everybody, Norway, Finland, so combined, NATO, NATO, NATO. So combined of Australia, UK, France, Germany, Canada, Poland, Canada, how much have they spent? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe a hundred billion. Maybe I don't know. Do you know? It's like ten percent of what we spent. That, Them that, combined is less than half of what we spent. Uh, I know that for a in, fact. In the international realm, Russian aggression is a big issue and could be a bigger issue. And the amount of money that we can spend to help the Ukrainians versus us actually going to war. You don't like us going to war. You should like us going through. Not proxy going war. To yes. War. Proxy <laughs> war is way better than real war. You're fucking right. God damn. I can't beat that. Uh, so why, if we can so, minimize the threat of Russia. So not that you have any idea what the mindset of Putin is, but do you really think Putin is dumb enough to actually set boots in a UN or I'm sorry, a NATO country? You I think, think he's that, that I think stupid. That if, I think that I think that he. Could you think have, that if he just walked through Ukraine and got no resistance, and we didn't put a dollar up, and Zelensky gets murdered in the street, or whatever then yeah, the fuck why happened. not? Why not just keep going? Because the he, the Ukraine's not part of the game. What do you mean the Ukraine's not part of the game? They're not part of the NATO game. They're not an Article Five yeah, country. Yeah, but why not just go to Moldova? Why not go to Bulgaria? Why not go to Poland? And well, Poland's a, a, a NATO a NATO country. Yeah, Is Finland. Moldova? Or Norway, whichever one's the closest. Finland one. is now, yeah, or is about to be. Is no. it not? Are, no, are, Finland are is. I think it's it's like a two or three year process. Well, Finland has been in paperwork process. Right. I don't oh, know yeah. how that works in the articles rules. If I don't know, if an in process country gets invaded, uh, whether or not that's part of it. But anyway, I think that I think that us supporting Ukraine is a hell of a lot better than us going to war with Russia. Sure, that's a great. Great statement, and but the, the, that 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 only makes sense if we're why the, not why not that, that only makes sense if the assumption is if we don't go to a proxy war with Russia through Ukraine that Russia will then go and continue. And again, 
Even if I, they do, even if they invade Poland, other than the Article 5, if we take Article 5 off the table, yeah. but we're not obligated to step in. You've been watching Jimmy Dore. Sure, among <laughs> others. Um, if Article, if, if Even if they go into Poland and Article 5 is not a part of the game, even if they go into Germany, where does that become our problem? Why is because that a negative it, it for us? it destabilizes the Western world or Western economy. I mean, the war in Ukraine has already destabilized grain, sure. grain prices. And it doesn't help that we blew up a pipeline, but whatever. Uh, and it's, desta- it's destabilized a number of different industries. I mean, I'm not... A, Have you not heard that story yet? Have you heard the story? You know what I'm talking about. What? I, I the, know what you're pipeline? talking about. Oh, the pipe... Did we... I mean, I'm not a... I'm not a... You, I'm you're asking me... I'm, you're I asking me I, international I I relations issues. I guess I, I guess I didn't read what actual intelligence agencies had said about it and warned against reading into it, but that's cool. Go ahead and make up okay. your mind about it. I can't remember the... <laughs> you're right. I can't remember you're the right, guys You're right. It's been 100% confirmed that, that <laughs> yes... Because they would admit that to the public because they, they would. Right. I just thought... I Because I they would... Yeah. I don't see the value in this. I don't. I, I, I think. I that, don't see the value I think of that authoritarian governments anywhere are bad. I, I agree. Support democracy. I agree. Does that obligate me to do something? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, because my tax dollars are taken from me and spent on it. In the grand scheme of tax dollars, the the amount of money that we spend on Ukraine is is. Would you, Would you prefer we turn a blind eye to it? Sure. Yes. Actually, I think that would be the correct answer. For how okay. how far? I don't know. When is it actually a threat to me? That's what they said about Hitler. Okay. Oh, well, you know, just let him take over. I okay. mean, you, you care about the money affecting our economy. And it didn't matter until we got in the game. So, right? Only Except in- Russia. Russia was actually probably more... We got in the game when Japan Russia, attacked us. Russia was probably more influential with the, with the downfall of, of the Nazis than the U.S. was, but, you know, they're the bad guys. Who are? Russia. I mean, the Soviet Union is different than Russia as we don't know it now, but yeah. Okay. What were you saying? I'm sorry, Tim. I don't know what I was listening to. You got hot. You got to pee again? Yeah, I think I got God. a small bladder today. All right, so new no, rule. So it, it one was, glass of wine for Matt from now on. He's not it, allowed to drink more than one glass of wine. So is it only until it affects our economy? I mean, there's a line until somewhere. Until a country sure. they take over. There's got to be a line somewhere. Where's where's that line for you? Like, I mean, it's where be- where would you be okay with U.S. dollars being spent on an engagement with any enemy that threatens our economy? All right. So we like to throw this phrase of national security around, right? Like right. it's for our own national security, right? Uh, do we not have an economy capable without of sustaining itself? No. Okay. We are highly dependent upon many other on nations. On Russia? And on Ukraine? Not on, not on Russia. How much? On, on a Ukraine? And because, I think I mentioned this the other day. Like, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't recognize or I didn't realize until you know, right. the beginning of this war that 40% of the world's wheat comes from Ukraine. Right, so, yes, because our I would say somewhere in there right, because is wheat coming to us, as we even though we, we make it ourselves. other countries' food stores by buying Ukrainian food stores for other countries that we're subsidizing. Wait, say that again? <laughs> how much? How much Ukrainian? He wheat takes is all these the jumps. States? You gotta, you gotta figure it out. How much Ukrainian wheat is coming to the United States? How much do we need Ukrainian wheat for I don't us know. to eat? Don't don't ask me questions. You know, I don't know the answer to. Please, I don't know that you don't know the answer to that. You're why saying- the fuck would I know? <laughs> How much grain we get from Ukraine? Am I in the Department of Agriculture? You just Sam ass- did his dissertation on Ukrainian grain. You just e- asserted. Economics. You just asserted that they. Put I just 40% asserted of the that before the beginning the of this planet. Right. That's. I'm sorry. Yes, I said. All right. So that it, before the beginning of this, I did not realize that 40 percent of the world's economy. Okay. So I did not follow that up with. So, I know the breakdown of each individual country's import. So in the national security conversation, what does it matter if 40% of the world's wheat is not available because of what of what Because Russia's we're doing? the world's largest economy. Isolationism is not a viable – whether you like it or not, isolationism is not a viable position for the United States when we are the world's largest economy. We just can't be isolationist. We can't just not care what happens in the other parts of the world. Okay. I mean I, 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 I acknowledge the idea that isolationism is a little bit too extreme. I get that. But um, what's the other? What's the what's the inverse of isolationism? Uh, interventional Inter- interventionism. Inter- inter- yeah, globalization. Yeah, 
Does it? Uh, how how well is interventionism done for the United States in the long run? Uh, not well. That's why Joe Biden pulled out of Afghanistan. That's why he hasn't sent troops to Ukraine. Right. How much? What 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 was the point of Afghanistan again? No, oh, that was the terrorism thing. I'm talking. Ask the, that's ask the Bush up. administration. I don't know. It's so easy. It's so easy when you can just pick the side and pick the parts that you like about the side. <laughs> but I don't care about the side. I I'm don't just care saying, about the, when we are the world's largest it. economy, and you have the historical precedent that is the United States, we cannot not be concerned about what happens in other parts. Of the world. I don't disagree that we can't that we do that we don't need to be concerned about it, and we don't need to insert what influence we we can on it, but. When we're sitting here, what what are we staring at? Uh, uh, Biden put his budget out today, yesterday, right? Uh, yeah, it's going to reduce Which the is, deficit. It's a joke, but whatever. It's going to um, reduce the deficit. It's fine. It's a joke. It's just like the Republicans' response to it is a joke. It doesn't oh, really fucking matter. They haven't even put their budget it's out gonna, it, It's going to play this fucking game, and we're going to play the deficit hike and whatever and all this fucking bullshit that we do every fucking Shut year. Shut the government down. Get right. your, if, you, if you need to get I your passport know. renewed, do it now. You're right. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know how much, like, the hundreds of billions or whatever it is we've spent in Ukraine is as a percentage of the total. Yeah, yeah. It's not much. I get it. But when we're sitting here having Republicans trying to hold the entirety of the U.S. government hostage for debt reduction. Yeah. And we're spending billions of dollars all around but, the world. But support for Ukraine is bipartisan. It's not just Democrats. I, okay. I mean, I, I, I guess. I mean, the Republicans like the war machine, sure. They like to. They they it's like not a to. War machine. They like there to support are no U.S. Their troops that have touched ground in Ukraine, sure. and, and there will not be. Right, and and is the war machine and, only and, the bodies and, and, that and, we put there? And in fact, by supporting Ukraine, we are trying to ensure that we don't have to get sure. American troops involved. Right. We're just giving them our missiles that are supposed to be for our defense. We're just giving them our tanks that are supposed to be for our defense. We're just giving them our. I'd rather what? that than give than, than put soldiers on the ground anywhere. Right, and so the war machine can start kicking out new things, and they can start selling new shit to the Pentagon, and those Raytheons and whatevers keep building more more whatevers, and they can keep selling them to the U.S. government. And good, great. That's why I bought Raytheon stock. That's why I buy Raytheon. That's why I buy Boeing because they're going to start put sending F twenty twos over there, and I'm going to make some money off my stock. Um, but isn't I thought that those were coming from Canada. I don't know that there's any jets officially going over there, at least that are U.S. Oh, yeah, I thought that's because they were coming from Canada. Uh, where did Canada get them? They bought them from us. From Canada. From Canada. <laughs> they bought them from us. Come on now. Let's be real. <laughs> from Toronto. I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, right. Well, maybe we didn't send them, but it still supports our war machine because yeah. our well, companies. came from Germany. Our companies that are, no, the, the current ones that are already there are. But they're sending Abrams over there, and those are our tanks. Those aren't German tanks. Those aren't Polish tanks. I think that if if we can help stabilize the world uh, geopolitical economic situation at the uh, without sending troops and, and at a fraction of the dollar of having an actual war, then we should definitely do that. I think there's no. I don't think there's any discussion about that because again, we just there's no way that we could be isolationist. Maybe, maybe if you want to be, maybe we could be, should be, but we can't be isolationist while we're the number one economy in the world. Okay, should so we, should we shut again? off uh, food aid to starving countries? I don't know how many. How many? What, uh, what's the no, what's the number? What, what percentage of Americans are, are underfed? I don't know. I mean, it's a lot. How uh, many how many uh, Americans are, are under missile attack right now? <laughs> so that's what it, so you need to be under imminent physical danger to yeah, be able that's to get pretty food? Much, yeah, yeah, imminent starvation, you know, imminent death. Yeah, I would consider those pretty hand in hand. Okay. So but but both have to be both both need to be right, there. Let's just go back to the original question. Right. So both of those things need to be there for our government to spend the money on it. So the uh, fact that I, it's just how many, a how many homeless question. do we have in Knox County? All right, right now? all right. Let's let's talk about something else. Sorry. No, how many homeless do we have in Knox County right now? I don't know. You keep asking me these questions. It's it's not a small number. Well, there are imminent starvation concerns for those people. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, but we you can't know, take care of them. But we can take care of. I'm, I'm just trying to say the you, are, you are against federal spending for other countries because it doesn't really matter to us. And I'm asking you just a simple question: Should the U.S. government stop funding? Sending food to third world nations that are starving. 
I, I, I think if we have the, the with the amount of population that we have starving in this country, yeah, there are okay. federal okay. funds. I think there so are federal right, that's, funds that's to help with the homeless here. I think we can do multiple things at the same time. Uh, are we? Yeah, yeah. We, there's a huge amount of federal funds that flow into the city of Knoxville for the homeless. Okay, I did. I, I, I then. And I, you, I, of anyone else, I would think should, wouldn't think that just throwing money at a problem would fix it. I mean, I don't disagree with that part at all. But that's that's not that doesn't unequivocate the the argument that I'm trying to throw out. Yeah, well, here. I think we can do multiple things at the same time. So I we, think that you can pay for your we kid can't, to do something and pay for your other kid to do something at the same time. Well, that's because I make money and I have money. Yeah. I don't create money. It just doesn't magically appear when I ask it to. Because when I put money out into the game, yeah, it doesn't change the game. It's just money in the game. Yeah, I don't just well, that's make. Why Joe Biden's I, I budget don't, is going to reduce the deficit. I just don't pr- produce money out of the sky and more debt and whatever the fuck you want to call it. Which I don't know where inflation comes from. It just magically it's it's just it's it's a it's a. Hey, the Fed meets on Wednesday. It's a, it's I'm a actually given. applying for a loan for something, so I hope that I get approved before Wednesday when they increase the rates again. Which okay. they should. It should be the Fed rate should be like twenty percent. It's ridiculous that so the that Fed puts don't it up buy stuff. It's kind of interesting that like our whole economic system depends on a certain amount of people being unemployed. Yeah, it's been defying most like economic economic economists, Econom- economists, economists. economists. <laughs> We're getting there. Projection. So like you know, hey, credit card debt's up. Like the economy's still spending. Like inflation's really high, but yeah. people are still spending money. Yeah, I just like we can't get them to stop spending money. Yep. What What is the last big purchase you made? Uh, what defines a big purchase? I don't, have you have you thought about buying something, but then you thought, nah, I've decided I'm not going to buy that. Uh, all right. Um, we were trying to buy my mother-in-law a house. Mm-hmm. Does that count? Yeah, I guess so. And because we were, interest this rates. Was, this was right at the beginning of this whole mess. Yeah. And we had a shot at one, but between the interest rates game and just Knoxville housing in general, oh, yeah. we got UT. murked. Yeah. I mean, and this wasn't even, no, this was not UT related. Directly, um, but I mean the the interest rates are designed to make people not buy stuff. Sure, like um, like I thought about buying a car recently because we just have one car, but then I thought, well, you know, interest rates. I'll just wait. I'll not do it. So at least I'm doing my part by not buying something. Well, because like you're doing your part by not buying something, Sam. Have you thought about buying something recently? You're like, ah, I'm not going to buy that. Yeah. I what, buy what, what is my part? What I want to buy a new car. Yeah, there you go. My part for my part of what? I don't, you didn't buy a house. Right, but what? But I'm doing my part. By well, not buying the, house, by interest what? rates increasing are designed to people designed to get people not no. to buy stuff. Well, congratulations, Jerome Powell, you win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like, like the idea that I couldn't, I don't know, the old school bank model that used to be like I go to the bank because they have cash. Yeah, yeah, and borrow money from them at a rate mm-hmm. that's reasonable to me and the people that put their cash there. Yeah. Okay, that works, but now the banks don't have to bother with what they have they just turn around and borrow from the fed and that's why the rate that's why your bank rates are directly relative to the fed the fed shouldn't the fed shouldn't be lending money to anybody especially the banks it's fucking it's a it's a bank money making game it's, i don't know, to do I don't know how the system works i don't i i should it's not for me and you plus. i'll tell you that much it's it's not um, for me and you well, to I just, be more I do prosperous know that and happy. increasing interest rates is designed to get people to buy less money like what you were saying sam is like they're trying to get people to buy less so that inflation goes down but so far people just keep buying but at least from what i've read again i'm not an economist is that a lot of people say that we there's so many different like if you read certain statistics it's like oh we should be in a recession and if you read other statistics you're like oh wow we this is like the economy's booming it's like something that's never been. There's all these different things that are happening at the same time. Like people are still buying, but interest rates are up, and unemployment is super no, low. This, this bubble hit somewhere because the debt, because so much of this buying is on debt, whether it's Fed related interest debt or not. Credit card debt being the biggest one. I mean, I, I believe that right now we are at the largest credit card debt as a nation ever. Ever. Yeah. And I don't know what happens. What happens when people stop paying their credit cards? I don't know. A, 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 on scale. Collections agencies make a shit ton of money. No, because they don't pay. I mean, if I didn't pay it to the credit card in the first place, I'm not going to pay it to the collection. Some people will, but for the well, most somebody's part, somebody's got to be making money, right? Well, it's. I think. I think this is. I think we're we're staring down the barrel of it, the 2008 housing crisis. Uh-huh. Is now the 2025 credit card crisis. I don't know. Is that 
people are going to default on it. All these credit cards are going to write it off, and they're going to be on the brink of bankruptcy, and they're going to get bailed out yeah. too. You know what I think's a scam, a whole sham? Credit scores. Sure. I think that's a whole scam. And then freaking uh, what was the, a couple of years ago, maybe a year or two years ago, where the that one credit score agency, they basically just like lost everybody's identity. They're like, oh, yeah, all your social security numbers are out Experian. there. Experian? Yeah. And then you're like, okay, well, are you going to do anything about it? They're like, ah, you know. I mean, I, like, and, and the, the metrics don't ever make sense to me. No. Like, it, it makes no sense to me. Someone once told me that I had too high of a credit score. I need to take out some debt. What the freak is that? How does that make sense? Like, I mean, like, I have too high of a credit score. I need to collect some de- debt. You so need my to credit lower score your, gets your, yeah. de- your credit score. They said, like, oh, if you apply, they're going to wonder why it's such a high credit score. What the frick? Right. I, I pay my bills. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. That's a bad thing. <laughs> well, it's like one of my, like, the big issue that I have is that, like, our business account is tied to me. Yeah. And we have a $15,500 limit. Yeah. And we run that bitch up twice a month, yeah. three times a month. Mm hmm. Paid off. Yeah. But if they when they run their report, it depends on where it sits. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's like, oh, you're at 15 out of 15. Oh, my gosh. Right. Yeah. And I look terrible. Yeah. And then they catch it when I'm at zero, and it's okay. Yeah. And, like, as the whole thing balances out, it's it's like a 700, 710. Yeah. It's not great. And it's, it's okay. like, yeah. I, 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 I make okay money. My I, goal I in life my is to bills. get to 800. I haven't done it yet. I, well, like I was at, I was magically at a perfect spot when I bought this house. Like I was like, like I will tout myself as genius all day long, but for a lot of shit, I was lucky as fuck. Yeah. I hit this house right as we were coming out of the bubble shit. Um, houses were still cheap. Interest rates were at the floor. I was at the top of my interest top, or, of, your game. Uh, top of my game as far as credit <laughs> scores go and i hit it like i just nailed it on the fucking head it's like it was just a perfect combination of things i'm the it's luckiest like playing the slots yeah yeah and i hit i hit the jackpot hard yeah on this house um i don't know man like it's like well i refinanced our house when credit when um interest rates were super low so i think we have like a two point Three interest rate now, which is right. like, oh my god! Well, going on the, I never want to move out of my house. Now. Right, going back to the if UT I move out thing. of my house, I'm gonna get a seven percent loan somewhere. Yeah, going back to the UT thing, it's like 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 people like us are, are we're we're stuck. Yeah, like if I wanted to move, like I love my house. Don't get me wrong, but eh, it needs some work. Yeah, I don't really want to do the work on it. I'd rather buy something better. Mm-hmm. There's no option. Yeah, like I can get max value out of it right now. But I can't go anywhere. Yeah, you live at Carm. Right. And yeah. so, like, I'm I'm literally stuck in this house. There's no real play for me. You're not literally stuck, but yeah. I'm pretty close to literally stuck. Yeah. I'm as literally stuck as Florida banning books is actually uh, book bans. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything to close out on? got to uh, give us the story. What time of the... is it? I don't know what time it is. Oh, wow. It's past 1030. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're two hours in. So. Uh, anyway, yeah. Credit scores, scam, higher education. Scam. Well, it's a sham. <laughs> it's a scam. <laughs> There we go. It's, I mean, it, like it's, it's a, it is a skip. Um, news, of, news of the Sam. Sam, 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 Sam. Give me news of the weird. I wonder where the uh, it was a servile, which is a it's like a mid-sized cat. I think it's native of Africa. It was found in a house and is now safe in Cincinnati Zoo, but it has now been dubbed the Cocaine Kitty. <laughs> cocaine Kitty. <laughs> yeah. Seen the movie yet? Because it was, it I was not. tested. I want to see the bear. Found movie. cocaine in the system. I got really? A, huh? Yeah. I got in a fun, weird argument about it. Like somebody was. Wait, really... hold on, hold on. Did they know where the cocaine came from? No, it was originally found. I think cops were pulling this guy over, and it jumped out of his car and like oh my gosh. went up into a tree. Yeah. And then they. I what was the animal again? I'm sorry. Uh, it's called a servile. A servile cat or servile. Yeah, it looks like a house cat, but it's like two or three so times the, the size of a cat. Zoo took it. They're like forty to fifty pounds. Okay, I didn't yeah, know that zoos I'm pretty just sure. take animals. You know, I guess. Well, I mean, it's a, it's century. It's it's a wild animal. Oh that, wow! That's not that's not native. That's or, interesting. That's, it's an exotic wild cat found with cocaine in its system. Yeah, yeah, cocaine cat. This is not a movie. Yeah, neither is really the. Has it has it recovered? Like, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. They, I think they said it's okay. Okay, that's good. And it's now it's now in the the care of the zoo. So So, so they think that it's like a small leopardish. They think that this guy had cocaine too, and the cat ate some of the cocaine. That's the assumption. Okay, interesting. 
Huh. I, 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 I doubt Serval. the cat found it on its own. Interesting. What's the deal? It? Like, what's the deal with dealers? Like, Can I you click on the Wikipedia? Where's it native to? Oh, native to Africa. Okay. Yeah, the same story. I read talked about like capuchin monkeys that were found with like meth in their system and wow. shit. Man, it's just people with a shit ton of money with yeah. no the, morals. I feel like that's kind of the um, the stereotype though, like a, a big time drug dealer who yeah, also go, has all these weird animals. Yeah, you go get hippos and 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 you know there's a there is a thriving hippo population in South America. With the drug dealers. <laughs> because of a fucking drug dealer. <laughs> what was it? it was some exotic animal they were trying to find the home for that was like Pablo Escobar's. Oh, no, no, it was uh, not Pablo Escobar. Uh, El Chapo's. Oh, really? It was like some exotic animal of El Chapo's that they were trying to find a home for. Huh. I guess when you have so much money, it's like, what else are you going to do with it? Yeah. I mean, uh, Mike Tyson bought a fucking lion or whatever. Yeah. I would. I just wouldn't like any animals like that. I don't know. Like that's 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 have, that's my like. Uh, so I, I retired today. I officially don't have a, a real job. Um, oh really? Yeah. Is and, that I, I noticed the thing at the bottom right there. Is that yeah? Okay. Yeah. That's been sitting there for a long time. <laughs> I don't know why it's still there. Uh, well, I'll fix that right now. Bloop. I don't work there anymore. Um, uh, Congrats to you. And so, like the the life goal is to get some land and. My wife wants a baby animal farm. She doesn't want adult animals. She just okay. wants baby animals. Like what? Like what? Kind? Everything. Anything. The cute little baby. Like, whatever what, the fuck like it is. when they get in a certain age, you kill them or what? Sure, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm so sorry. They you go turned, from you they go three today. They go from the property near the house to the out in the wild, and then we go hunt them later. I don't know. It Happy birthday. <laughs> I mean, it depends what the. I where mean, would you? Where Where would you like to get some land? Uh, around here, Lox like, County. I like, my, like d- despite what our legislature is, like, is a mess, but yeah, um, Corrington or something. Yeah, I look. I, 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 Knox County is not on the table. Just, just financially, it's just not on the table. There's, there's not enough. Wow. So there's, what? You, there's so not what enough you, land in Knox you've County. You've invested for so value. much of your time into like being invested into the civic life of Knox County. Sure. What if you moved? Out? I'm not. I'm not moving. Like we are still living here. Oh, but you just want some land to right. have. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go. I want to kill stuff. What Loudon County or Anderson Loudon um, Granger? I bet would be cheap. Uh, Roan County maybe. Roan would be cheap. I bet. Yeah. Right. It's not. There's a, like what I've seen so far. It's, well, cheaper it's not, than like severe. Well, yeah, but like like yeah, hundred, hundred have, acres. Hundred acres ain't nothing regardless where you're putting it in Tennessee. Well, how much right you want? Well, at least fifty acres. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, I want some space. My uh, great grandpa's farm in North Carolina, to- old tobacco farms up for sale. I want uh, it's what, thirty acres. It's only thirty. I'd have to look at North it's Carolina. Got a, it's got a long. creek and it's got a little spring that comes out of it too. Old tobacco farm. It's got a pig pen still on it. The tobacco barns kind of falling over. But. Yeah, that's what barns do eventually. Yeah. Um, but you could turn it into a. There, North Carolina is about to legalize um, medical marijuana, so turn into God a damn cannabis Tennessee. farm I, I like i'm in a weird spot like I, i'm so stuck on this conversation it's not financially good for me yeah well d- what well, i mean couldn't you sell depends how depends how we set it up uh, that's true i'm assuming if, well, we're, wait, if so we're gonna if north do Car- it north carolina is about to legalize it because the republican majority leader in the senate gave the go-ahead to it and the the governor's a democrat so he'll sign it so um so then so if that passes what states around us will have legalized? Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia. Or, or, I'm sorry. Virginia. Is Virginia legal? Virginia's medical, right? No, Virginia's rec. Okay. And then what, hasn't Mississippi been talking about it? Too? I think Alabama went medicinal. I think you're right, yeah. What about Mississippi? I know Kentucky who had it on the table last year. I don't know if they brought it back up this year. What about Mississippi? I don't I think know. Georgia may have medicinal. I mean, I, I, I told um, Massey the first time I met her. It's like, what are we doing? And what is she is she supportive of it? She's a she's a she's a medicinal fan. Okay, but Briggs is against it. Sure. Which what's well, up, what's he's old McNa- up on it. What's old McNally? Hearts fire. Um, fire. I, I need to get Briggs in to talk about it because like no, you need to get McNally in. <laughs> I don't. He, His uh, second interview since the I've Seattle broke. I've got six stairs. I don't trust him to get up and down those stairs. Um, <laughs> Just send him a DM on Instagram. <laughs> with my ass on it, I'm not down with that. That's not how I am. I'm not thirsty like that. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm in a I'm in a hard spot. Like, philosophically, it's stupid the yeah. way we do this thing. But financially, it'd be a major hit to me. Unless it, they're not gonna. There's no way. How There's have no they done it so in far. other states? Like most states, you that, have to have uh, most states that have done it. It's like liquor stores of old in Tennessee. Oh, the old okay. way liquor stores used to work is that's all you could sell. 
Well, you could. You're entrepreneurial. You just open up. Open up a shop. Sure, because I have mounds of cash floating around that I can open up 15 new retail locations. No, I'm not saying tomorrow. 15. But, yeah. but as that's just it. It's like to to, to the, the and and to me, real realistically, the problem with the, the problem with it to me is that there will be a hundred that will show up the day after it's legal. Who from who? But big business anywhere, everywhere. Okay. A thousand little fucking bullshit. Some Wall Street firm's going to pull some a of bunch the, of money into A couple of those, but there'll be a bunch of, there'll be some franchisers, people that set up franchises out of companies out of California or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because it's, it's, it's what we did in CBD. You had this uh, American Shaman CBD that showed up, if you've ever seen any of them around. Mm. They're all, most of them are all gone already, but it was a franchise. Huh. And so people put up like 100, 150 grand, set this franchise up because all pre built, all set up. And yeah. They, we're okay is what the the product was actually okay. Yeah. It's just you have somebody who has no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Jumping into a franchise and getting murdered by the handful that actually know what they're doing. Yeah. When I went to Canada, it's different province to province. So like in Quebec, the government owns all of the dispensaries. Right, cuz that's Awesome, but then in Ontario, it's like private citizens can open up their right. own. Because, like, I mean, I mean, that's how liquor is in some states in, in Tennessee. Yeah. Is like, well, like in, ABC I think in North and, Carolina, it's ABC stores. Right. Yeah, and so it's and, and so it depends how the state sets it up, but it really doesn't matter because no matter how the state's going to set up, the best the best possible, they're not going to put it in like a chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're not going to put it in like anybody can sell it. Anybody can do whatever they want with yeah, it. Yeah. It's going to be at minimum, right. it's going to be a special permit. Yeah. Um, most likely it'll be a, a, a very prohibitive permit that you can't sell anything else. Um, and so that anybody that wants to get in, is going to open a new location. Yeah. Has it and, even been a discussion in this session at all? I mean, the Nashville guy put it up again. Which one? I don't know. The same one that's put it up like no, there's two or five three sessions in a row. Because there was, I think, Chisholm from Memphis and think had a oh, legalization yeah. bill as well. Yeah. That's a dem- I, think he had, I think he actually had two different no. ones. Like there ones any Republicans to do it? The closest Republican to do it is Briggs' is hemp D9. I thought Briggs was against. He is, except he acknowledges the fact that you can't put this Pandora back in the box. Uh, okay, okay. And if yeah, we're going to yeah. have it, which, again, square a circle That's for me. That's what you got because I bought it from you sometime. Yeah. yeah. Square a circle for me, Republican, of non-tax, non-regulation, and you're putting up a tax regulation bill on a product. That already exists legally in the state. Yeah, that's what he's doing right now. And but it didn't pass or anything. Did it? It's still floating around. It's not dead yet. Like, officially. But what was the other? Who was the other person that proposed it? Chisholm, I believe. Yeah, he's a Democrat from Memphis. Yeah. I want to say he had two different bills. Okay. That one's already failed, and, and, and one of the committees, or, yeah, but if, if or went of, to the goes to die committee. It up, it's not going to. It's not going to pass. We need a Republican to do it. Right, and there's, and they're not because yeah. they're not. They don't. In uh, North Carolina, the bill's being carried by a Republican. I mean, it. I, I don't. I don't understand the partisanship of this, the conversation. Anyway, I, I mean, I feel it doesn't like matter. I mean, the sports, reality is, sports betting and marijuana or cannabis. I feel like cannabis is more like if you're going to come down from like a righteousness standpoint, it's like I don't know, it's cannabis medicinal, whatever, versus sports betting. I mean, but heroin's medicinal. Cocaine, actually, that's a better, better example is cocaine. cocaine. Cocaine's medicinal. Just ask the cat. Yeah. They still use cocaine in eye surgery legally to this day. Yeah. Really? Why? Well, it dilates pupils? It's a it's a very great local anesthetic. Yeah. But, I mean, how many people are sitting around like, oh, I need to dilate my pupils and do that real, just real quick? I'm not sure what the procedures are that they do it with, but. <laughs> Let me just do a line of. Light of coke right now. It's not exactly <laughs> how it works, <laughs> but cocaine eye drops. Yeah. <laughs> cocaine but eye drops. Yeah. That's, uh, that's legitimately what they do. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's, it's a co- topically it, it is a, well, administered it's a cocaine eye drop that they use for some surgery. of those cocaine eye drops. Uh, anyway, so weren't you trying to close up about ten minutes ago? I don't know. Yeah, I'm in no rush. Uh, Todd's still listening. Yes, he is. Let's just run it out. Let's see if like four hours just to make sure to see how long Todd goes. <laughs> like old Joe Rogan. How long are Joe Rogan's? Eh, two to three hours. Some I've I've watched a couple of Joe Rogan's. I think they're interesting, but at a point, it's like they just kind of start talking about nothing. It's it depends. Like, come on. It depends on who he has and what they what they what the topic is. Yeah. Is he on Spotify? Exclusively okay. for a hundred million dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh! Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. They with with the caveat that he still gets to do clips on YouTube where he gets he gets to make his YouTube money. Oh, separate from Spotify. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. 
is he the biggest? Who's is he the biggest podcaster? Yeah, it depends on your definition of podcast, but he's up there. Like who? What else would you say? Uh, I don't know. Like the what? The Ben Shapiro Daily Wire is pretty. No, big. they're not close. Oh, really? Hmm. No. I'd say as as an individual single show without a network of other shows, that part of it, he's probably the biggest. Okay. I mean, I think you've got like a in the YouTube sphere or whatever the video part of it. You've got like Mr. Beast and stuff like that that kills him. I've what's this thing about Mr. Beast? People have been going in and messing with his chocolate bars or something. You seen this? No, I haven't seen that. Yeah. I saw everybody get mad about him helping people cure blindness, but whatever. No, no, there's something about people have been. He sells chocolate bars or something, yeah. and people have been going into stores and just like messing them all up. And so he's trying to like pay people to go in and like fix his chocolate bars. I mean, that's not abnormal in the industry of shelving. Yeah. game because well, that's, that's what i, I you retired to, from yeah, ret- <laughs> <laughs> that's what i just quit doing back in the day shells up from assholes fucking them up um but wait uh, is so it, who is mr beast i don't understand who he is i, I don't i remember his, his real name is like andrew something does it doesn't he like sell burgers or something too yep to kids i mean to anybody with uh, Uber Eats or whatever. Okay, okay. Is it mostly for kids or is it adults that watch? I mean, it? like I think his his main audience is younger, sure. Okay, like um, McNally. That's not that, that that's not even very good. Come on, like <laughs> McNally's boyfriend. That would be funny. Um, no, I mean, like it's he he does like I've watched a bunch of his videos. They're fun. But what does he talk? They're fun, silly. Like it's like um, I don't know. They, he puts together like, huge productions. Huh. Like he did a Squid Games spinoff. Uh-huh. Where like they like they created like he had his tech team yeah. create a software that made a little body pack that each of the contestants put on. Now I don't know how well you know Squid Games, yeah. but like they did Squid Games in real life, except instead of actually fucking killing people, yeah. they had these little body packs that like if they moved, if they did something they weren't supposed to do or whatever, the body pack alerted. Yeah. And they had a little uh, squid pack here and there that blew out like fake blood or whatever. Yeah. But like they did a whole like the wow. entirety of Skid Games, and it was like a, it was like a ten million dollar production. Oh my gosh! Like legitimately a ten million dollar production that he put I mean, together. It's a big deal. Yeah, and he made it, and 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 he probably made his money back in it. Yeah, and so like he's got like ten different channels, but like like dude's fucking brilliant. Yeah, like, the, the like he was on Rogan. It's a great episode of Rogan, and you you can listen to the whole three hours and actually worth yeah. getting all the way through. Um, but he's talking about like. The smartest thing, like, I, I mean, literally, like, as soon as he said it, I was like, that's fucking genius. So he has his show. Yeah. Which he has 100 million, 200 million followers on his channel. Yeah. On YouTube. And, He's and, YouTube. Right, on his YouTube thing. And he, and he has 200 million followers on his channel. He's the biggest single channel by itself. Wow. And then what he did is he went out and brought in a foreign language team. Oh. And so he has his channel in Spanish. Wow. In German. In Whatever. Yeah. And not only does he do it in foreign languages, but when he goes and hires voice actors to do his voice, other people's voice that are on the show, yeah. like the guy, the, the his Spanish version of his show is the guy that did um, Spider-Man for the Marvel series. Oh, so people know. In the Spanish, yeah. whatever. And they're so like, like, oh, I like that. when I they hear that. his like voice, yeah. they hear Spider-Man wow, that's when they're genius. watching Marvel. Stuff. And so like he, and he's contracts that out. Yeah. Other YouTubers that want to do foreign language versions of their shows, they hire his team to go and do the foreign wow, language version. That's like, brilliant. Like he's got and, and like just mounds of stuff. And he, and like to me, like I mean, like the best episodes that he does is like he just does stupid shit where he gives money to people that need it. Yeah. Like he figures out dumb ways. Like he'll order pizza. It's just an episode of them doing something stupid. Yeah. And then like one of the things, like uh, one of the episodes they 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 put like wi- like a. a, a uh, tight wire across a pool. Yeah, they had four four contestants, hundred grand for whoever stays on this wire the longest. Wow, right? And so they're doing it, and it's like an hour in, and, and it's like, you guys hungry? It's like, yeah. And so he orders pizza, and so the, they order the pizza, and they're just doing the whole thing, and the pizza guy's delivering the pizza, and he's like, here's ten grand. Oh my gosh, you know, it's just for just some random pizza delivery guy, just ten yeah. grand, and it's your it's it's your neighborhood, it's North Carolina, is where yeah. he does this, this thing. Where? He has the biggest studio. Where east of the going? Mississippi. I don't know exactly where it is. Okay. Huh. But he has the biggest television studio east of the Mississippi. Wow. That's fascinating. Um, Beating oh. Georgia. Like Georgia and all the like Walking yes. Dead shit and all yeah, the yeah, huge yeah, studio yeah. stuff that's going on in Georgia. He has the biggest, most expensive studio in uh, east of the Mississippi. Huh. But like, uh, but a lot of his stuff, he does philanthropic. Like he has a separate channel that's philanthropic. And yeah. every dollar that comes in from that channel goes into his philanthropic well, stuff. 
But he but he tries really hard to just give stupid money away or help yeah. people out that need it. That's cool. Well, now that I have a kid, I there's all these like kid YouTubers, uh like Miss Rachel is one. Uh Blippy, you ever heard of Blippy? I've heard it, I don't know it very well. That's another sh- sham. Um, we like uh But we... he's he basically gets like kids to watch his stuff and he's big on branding. And then he goes around and does tours, but it's not actually him. It's like someone impersonating him. Oh. And like the tickets are like $100. And they're like, tell your parents you want to go see Blippi. Yeah, Ryan's World? Yeah. Have you your done parents, World your parents don't love you unless they spend $100 oh, to send you to Blippi. Hey, I mean, yeah, he doesn't say up. that, but you know what I mean. They imply such. Yeah. Uh, 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 but, but Ryan's anyway, World was like a big a one whole... for my kids. Uh, I don't know what that is. So, uh, your, I mean, my son's a year and a half. Your kids are what? Uh, 10 and 12. Yeah, so they're different YouTube genres. Yeah, <laughs> generations. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's weird. But anyway, the YouTuber, I've, I mean, the YouTube YouTube realm is is pretty interesting. I never realized how big YouTube no, it's is. Huge, yeah. And it's it, what's interesting to me too is that like MySpace came and went. Even Snapchat's came is kind of going out now. TikTok's new. Facebook kind of came. Now it's mostly older people. But YouTube is kind of like stayed up. Like it's kind of stayed. Um, I think TikTok's got them beat, yeah. except for the Chinese element. Yeah, except right. for the politics. Yeah. Like the, like and and realistically, it's a scary set of politics, but like because YouTube has tried really hard because they have the new YouTube short subset, yeah, where like the best the best of the best on YouTube are now doing shorts because they're trying to copy the TikTok. Model. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, which I don't really like the shorts and stuff. Um, yeah, the TikTok politics. I I have I do not have TikTok because specifically I've been a little concerned about the politics of it. Um, but it, it, I'm interested to see what will come of it because I don't know. I, I, politically speaking, I, I think that if you ban TikTok, there could be a lot of younger people who would react politically. That's the to problem. That. Yeah. Yeah. But the, re, the, but the, the what's re, funny is that they don't vote now. Right. Yeah. But realistically, the issue is every ounce of data goes to CCP. Yeah. That's why I don't have TikTok. Right. Yeah. And so like, you know. And again, and not to not job, to go so back have, down not to go back phone. down the Ukraine rabbit hole, but we're going to spend a gajillion dollars on Ukraine, but we're not willing to pull the trigger on killing TikTok in the United States. Well, part of part of deterring Russia is deterring China from invading Taiwan. Hmm. Anyway, um, TikTok. Yeah, I don't. I, my so I have a work phone too, and the company that I work for has said you cannot have you cannot TikTok on your right? phone because there's nothing phone. that you're going to do work related that. That China doesn't know about, and I don't know whatever the company gives a shit about China. But, mm-hmm. um, all right, you're yawning. I'm yawning. What time is it? Yeah, oh my know. gosh, it's eleven. This shit, has been fun. Like, yeah. All right, I owe you another show, right? Because yeah, I was sick. Do. Yeah. I mean, so. we can go like to, we, <laughs> we, we, we can't. We can go two more back. hours. We're not doing back to back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sam, you got one more news of the weird just to close out on the news of the weird, like the official story that we were supposed to do. That was the official story. Well, the the format, the format as we close on the news of the weird, cocaine. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, cocaine counter. Yeah, give us passed. another one. It's too late for that. We tried that, that was just a that was just a segment inside the show. Let's see here. What is that? What's the sound like? I, I've, I've been meaning to build a little audio thing to lead into. Oh, is that clapping? Yeah, it's the. It's, oh, it it's sounds like static clapping. when like, you just do it for a second. Yeah, it's like, all right, you gotta and, hold it down. And Sam's news of the weird yeah. to close out this wonderful episode of Almost in Agreement. Well, hold on, give me an option. Do you want a New Hampshire lawmaker arrested for obstructing snowplow? <laughs> or. If you didn't live in 80, Tennessee, you would probably use the McNally thing. 82-year-old 80, charged with sale of fake Michael Jordan cards or mm. main motorist appeal to keep naughty vanity license plates. Ooh, I want the naughty license plate. Yeah, what's the license right. plate say? It says, love, T-O-F-U. T-O-F-U. Love to, love to fuck you. Uh, All right. All right, everybody. <laughs> But it's that's a, a podcast. Right, that's what we do. It's love a vegan to- guy that loves, to- <laughs> loves tofu. Oh, even better. It's not as funny when you tell the truth. You didn't let me. <laughs> almost in agreement, everybody. Almost in agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Website is almost in agreement.com. Um, check it out. 23 Voter Guys coming soon. Uh, favorite podcast writer. Do all those things. Help us uh, spread the word. Uh, Matt Shears, everybody. It's always fun to have Matt Shears in the room. Uh, I've been to tell you, Matt, that wonderful lamp next to you is from the wonderful and one and only Randy Pace. Um, w- weird gift. He just brought it last time he was here. Is anyway. he getting rid- is he cleaning out his garage? I guess. But it's so weird. We didn't even talk stay. about the, the Knox County Republican Party. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's what we do. We do random bullshit and... Uh, 
go for hours, uh, get people drunk, and uh, have a good time. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, uh, Frommeyer, hit me up. Let's do a show. Let's do a Hamlin County special. Um, I have no idea what to talk about on it, but uh, I'm sure you have plenty, and your Crocs are beautiful. Uh, love to see you guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys soon.